Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is uh, a local planning agency meeting. The meeting is being scheduled for Monday, uh, Monday 2nd, uh, 2016, at 7.45 p.m. at the Commission Chambers, 500 Southwest, 109th Avenue. It is right now uh, 7 49. Uh, let's stand up for the roll call, Madam Clerk. Clerk will note all members present. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Dear Lord and good God, thank you, Lord, for your love, your protection and your wisdom. Thank you for every day we receive your blessings. Thank you for our city, our constituents. Thank you for this meeting, for the audience, and thank you for all the goodness that you bring us in our lives. We ask you for your protection to our police nationwide, to our armed forces all over the world and at home, since they put their life every day on the line of life or death, to protect us. Bless this meeting, guide us with wisdom so that we can always make good decisions with good judgments to favor this lifestyle of our citizens. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In your holy name we pray, amen. 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 The City Commission sitting as a local planning agency will consider the following three ordinances. A. An ordinance of the City of Suarez, Florida granting a small scale comprehensive plan amendment for that certain property identified under folio number 25-3031-017-0020 changing the land use category from I-2, Industrial Heavy Manufacturing, to C-2 a special commercial, providing findings of fact, providing for severability, and providing for codification, and providing for an effective day. This meeting is open to the public. If there is anyone in the audience that wants to come forward and express any concerns about this item, please do so now. No one is coming forward. Public meeting is closed. Uh, Commissioners, do I have a motion? Move. Second. I have a question if I could. Go ahead, Commissioner. Open for discussion. I forgot if I mentioned it here, but I figured I'd just ask you. Uh, your recommendation? Yes, Everything? for approval. Uh, through the Chair, uh, good evening, Commissioners. Good evening, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, just some clarifications I, I want to make prior to uh, this board approving or, or, or making a decision. Um, on the supporting documentation for this item, there is uh, there was an error in terms of, of the type of um, in which we reference the property as I-2 or light industrial. For the record, I want to clarify, the property is, is I-2 heavy industrial district, mm -hmm. and it's being changed to uh, the C-2 special commercial. So it just, just on the supporting documentation by staff, there was you say a discrepancy. It is industrial light? It, no, it's heavy. Heavy. Yes. And okay. we made references as light, and it's incorrectly. All right. Through the mayor. Go Come ahead, Commissioner Suarez. Is the last a heavy industrial or heavy uh, machinery? Heavy industrial, sir. Industrial heavy manufacturing. Yeah, it's, it's industrial heavy manufacturing, for the record. Mr. President. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Quadra. Yes, just, just want to let the this local planning agency know that, the, the, as, as uh, the director described, that, that, that information is in the, the backup documentation. Okay. The resolution and the required notices ha identify the, the, proper, uh, uh, the land. proper land use and in and, and, and the resolution and the notice. So. And it said that it's uh, heavy industrial? It's heavy. Instead of uh, manufacturing? It's, it's, it's industrial heavy manufacturing uh, to special commercial. All right. 
Okay, I had a motion by Commissioner Maroño and I had a second by Commissioner Duazo. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Maroño? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Commissioner Duazo? Yes. Commissioner Bergignan? Yes. Commissioner Barreto? Yes. Commissioner Yano? Yes. President Diaz? Yes. Ordinance uh, or item A passed unanimously. We move to item B. An ordinance of the City of Sweetwater City Commission rezoning that certain property identified under folio number 25-3031-017-0020 from I-2 Industrial Heavy Manufacturing to C-2 Special Commercial, providing for findings of fat, providing for severability, and providing for codification I'm providing for an effective day. Do we have the same issue here? Yes. So to heavy industrial. Yes, it's, since they were both on the same supporting documentation, it's a, a rep repetition of what occurred before. The, the, re the, the records, yeah. The rest of both the resolution and the required notice provide the the, the, the correct industrial uh, zoning. Okay. Inside. Okay, I had a motion by. Maybe. Commissioner Bergignan and second by Commissioner Duazo. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Commissioner Duazo? Yes. Commissioner Bergignan? Yes. Commissioner Barreto? Yes. Commissioner Yano? Yes. Commissioner Maronio? Yes. President Diaz? Uh, yes. Item B passed unanimously. We move to item C. An ordinance of the Sweetwater City Commission rezoning that certain property identified under folio number 25-3031-001-1240 and 25 25-3031-001-1230. 3031-001-1250 from RS single family residential district to 11 industrial light manufacturing providing for findings of fat providing for severability providing for codification and providing for an effective date so president public hearing this uh, meeting is open to the public. If there is anyone that have any concerns about this item, please come forward. No one is coming forward. Public meeting is closed. Move. Through the, through the chair. Uh, there is a motion by Commissioner Duas and a second by Commissioner Maroño. Open for discussion. Through the chair. Go ahead, Commissioner Suarez. There is a typographical error on the uh, type of uh, zoning, it says here 1-1, supposed to be I-1. Yes, sir. Correct. That's, uh, that's a Scrivener's error that has to be corrected. Uh, okay. So we we'll have to amend that on page 1 and page 2, the reference to, to industrial light manufacturing uh, as I-1. As I-1. That will be the amendment. Through, through the chair Go also. Um, this particular... Um, rezoning commenced some time ago and we were still there's some reference in in the supporting document which references to the original zonification which under the county's ordinance was iu1 for clarification purposes the property uh, is i1 and it's being zoned from residential rs to i1 uh, industrial light manufacturing but when the process was started there was, we were still under the county's uh, zoning designations of IU1, and that's just for clarification purposes. Carlos, where is this property? The house by? It's it's on the northwest side by uh, like 108th and 23rd Street. It's in by that area. By A few blocks oh. east, south of it. And, okay. And to, it's all the, the lots west of 108th Avenue. And it the, has? Uh, there's there's a, a significant amount of lots, yes. yes. May I? <laughs> Go ahead, Commissioner. Mr. Carlos. Yes, sir. Please, please. La Covacha is closed. Closed. It's not up to me. It's closed. Please. Sir. Not up to me. Sir. Possibly. 
Si sono le opinioni, io non devo dire una roba. That's up to you. you Problem, this problem. Marijuana, rock. Oh Muerto, herido, bronca. <laughs> Okay, Madam Claire, roll call for item C. I mean, uh, yes, it was a motion by Commissioner uh, Duazo and second by Commissioner Maroño. Do the item as amended? And the item as amended uh, uh, on pages one and two. Correcting the, the, the Scrivener shows the reference to the zoning, it should be I1 rather than 1 1. May I make a present? Go ahead. Uh, my vote for amendment, same. No. Also, amendment. What do you say about it? What do you we just say? did it. Okay. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Duasso? Yes. Commissioner Bergignan? Yes. Commissioner Barreto? Yes. Commissioner Iano? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Commissioner Maroño? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. President Diaz? Yes, item C passed unanimously. Okay. All right, uh, I need a, a motion to adjourn the local planning agency meeting. Move. Move by Commissioner Breguignan, Daniel, and Suarez, second by Commissioner uh, Duazo. All in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned at 8.01 p.m. Yes. <coughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is our regular commission meeting. Meeting is scheduled for Monday, May 2nd, 2016, at 8 p.m. at the commission chambers, 500 Southwest, 109th Avenue. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Clerk will note all members present. And may I make an announcement before we go any further? There's uh, a sign-in sheet if anybody wishes to speak to the City Commission, please come and sign up. Si alguien quiere hablarle a la comisión, por favor, o al alcalde, eh, hay una hoja para firmar ahí, fírmenla, pongan su nombre y su dirección para su debido momento que puedan hablarle a la comisión. If someone wants to address the commission of the mayor, they can go ahead and write down your name on the signing sheet and pass it to the <coughs> city clerk so that you can address the commission at the proper time. We had the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation already. We move to item number four, special presentations. A presentation by, before I move forward, I want to recognize uh, Fire Chief Dave uh, Donny, sir. Good evening. Thank you for being here. And come, come forward. And we also want to uh, recognize Mr. Luis Perez Medina from Miami Dade County Circuit Judge. Good evening, sir. Well, good evening, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Dave Downey, and uh, again, I'm your fire chief. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come here tonight and speak on behalf of your fire department. Uh, a little bit about myself. I've been in the fire service now for 34 years, and I've been the chief for three. 
actually started my career right here at Station 29. Wow. Um, as a firefighter and a new lieutenant, I was at 39, at 29. Um, uh, Miami-Dade, as you know, is a full-service fire department. We operate 68 stations, over 140 units, and um, we're the sixth largest in the nation as far as fire departments. Last year, we ran about 248,000 calls, and we did that with 2,400 personnel. 2,000 of those are firefighters. I'm proud to say that we were recently re-accredited by the Commission on Fire Service Accreditation International out of 216 departments worldwide. We're one of the second largest, only Houston is larger. Um, and we've celebrated quite a f uh, few achievements in the past year. We were awarded the silver uh, recognition from the American Heart Association for our cardiac and STEMI care. We celebrated 30 years of our air rescue helicopter operations. And we placed uh, a fireboat in service again at Fort Miami, and a second one going in service at North uh, Hallover. We added 63 new firefighters, and we opened two new stations, one down south and one out in the west. And despite all the uh, financial challenges we've all experienced, I'm here to say your fire department is alive and well and doing strong. And we're poised to hire another 270 firefighters in the next three years and open additional sa stations and service. Um, we provided you with an annual report and some copies here with the clerk. Um, the city of Sweetwater uh, has been served by Miami-Dade Fire Rescue since 1975. Last year we responded to 3,220 calls for service here in the city alone. 78% of those were handled by Station 29 right here on 107th Avenue. But it's important to understand that we're a fire department, not a fire station. So there's four additional fire stations that are within four miles of the city that also serve this city. And that, uh, that uh, comprises a chief, three rescues, and four uh, fire trucks. A total of 33 firefighters. And another important thing is 70% of those are paramedics. So even if the fire truck arrives, it's staffed and equipped with paramedics to deliver life-saving <coughs> care. We're proud of our customer satisfaction survey that we do every year. Countywide, out of a possible five, we get 4.86, which is pretty good. And here in the city, 4.91. And lastly, but most importantly, the benchmark by which we're all measured, our response time. Countywide to life-threatening is seven minutes and 14 seconds. Here in the city, though, it's a minute faster, six minutes and 14 seconds. And we continue to work to try to improve those times. For fires, countywide, it's six minutes and four seconds. And here, we've got the best time in the county, three minutes and 30 seconds. So we've got good response that's time for right. fire units. So that's really all I have. I, ha I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you and happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chair. Go ahead, Commissioner. Chief, I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that you're doing a great job. And you guys went out to my house uh, about two years ago and saved me. I had a heart attack, and uh, you got me there quick. You did a good job. So. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. I'm glad you're doing well. Thank you. Thank you. It was right on time, sir. Yes. All right. <laughs> Anything else? Good. Thank good. you. Thank you for your service. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you. Uh, Hi, good, good evening. Good evening. My name is Luis Perez Medina. I want to thank all of you for giving me the opportunity to be here and to speak to you and to speak to the great people of the city of Sweetwater. I just wanted to come in and introduce myself. My name is Luis Perez Medina, and I'm currently a candidate for circuit court judge. I'm running in an open seat currently held by the Honorable Jill Friedman. I'm running for circuit judge because I believe I have a debt that I owe this country and this community for all the opportunities I have been given in my life. I'm running because I believe I have the knowledge and experience, I also have the life experience to be a good circuit judge. I believe there's two qualities that make a good judge. One is the life experience and the other one's legal experience and I have both. Like most residents of this county, I am a, I'm an immigrant. I came to this country when I was eight years old from Cuba. I spent many, many years working during the day, working hard, and going to school at night so I could get my bachelor's degree. And at age 41, I was lucky enough that FIU opened their law school and accepted me 
into the inaugural class. I went for three and a half years. I worked during the day, I went to school at night, and I graduated number one in my class. And from then, I went to work for the state attorney's office. And I've worked for the state attorney's office now for 10 years. I've, had, I've been supervisor of the state attorney's office. I've had all types of criminal cases from misdemeanors to homicide. I've had numerous trials. So I believe I have the legal experience to be a good judge, and I have the life experience to be a good judge. So I humbly ask for your support August 30th, and I ask for the support of the people of Sweden. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank good you. luck. Bueno, gracias por tenerme aquí. Eh, no preparé el speech en español, pero eh, quiero darle las gracias a ustedes y a los miembros de la ciudad de Sweetwater. Eh, mi nombre es Luis Pérez Medina y soy candidato para la Corte Circuita en Miami-Dade County. Eh, yo estoy corriendo para, para, para juez porque yo creo que tengo la experiencia que necesito para ser un buen juez. Tengo la experiencia trabajando en la fiscalía y tengo la experiencia eh, que he vivido. Como muchas de las personas en Miami-Dade County, yo vine aquí cuando tenía ocho años. Vine de Cuba eh, y trabajé duro toda mi vida. Eh, trabajé de día, iba al colegio de noche y al fin me pude graduar con el bachelor's. Y cuando FIU abrió el colegio de leyes, yo fui a, eh, me aceptaron y fui a la primera clase de FIU eh, trabajando de día, yendo al colegio de noche por tres años y medio, y al fin me gradué número uno del colegio, de la clase. De ahí fui a trabajar para la fiscalía y llevo diez años trabajando en la fiscalía, haciendo todo tipo de casos, de los casos menores a, a los homicidios. Me gustaría su apoyo, agosto 30, y el apoyo del pueblo de Sweetwater. Gracias. Muchas gracias, caballero. Ok, we move to item number five, presentation of employee of the month award, Mayor. For this month, I'd like to name employee of the month Amelia Espinosa, our passports manager, who has done an exceptional job over the last couple of months. So... You know, I understand that it's recognized by the city clerk as well. She's doing a phenomenal job. Very young girl, and she, after um, our former passports manager resigned, she stepped up to the plate and has really stepped it up. May I meet the president? Go ahead, Commissioner. Finite directors in here. Why not? Why not pay $50? What did you present employee the month? I pass in two tax and trees. Resolution for fifty dollars. Another way, Cecilia, in here. Cecilia, please stand up. You work in this zoning? Yes. And pay? No, I don't know why, Mister. <laughs> or not, this is impossible. Hey, Commissioner, I'm not the one that authorizes the payments. If they're not put into the system, I don't. I don't sign the checks. The checks for employee of the month are put in by HR, and they are being put in. Uh, the ones for the zoning employees have to be put in by the building director. Once he puts them into the system, then they get paid. Thank you. Uh, presentation of the officer of the Mondo War. Um, the chief of police wasn't here today. Couldn't be uh -huh. here. He had a problem. And he's going to refer it to next month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Seventh. Item number seven, reports of officer boards and committees. Item number eight, <coughs> additions and deletions to the agenda. We have an addition, which is item O, ratification of department heads. Where? Uh, uh, the city clerk sent that via email. Yes. Hmm. I'm supposed to add oh, it every S -O. meeting. I forgot Lomando to add it this meeting. Oh. But I don't, I don't have it in my, in my agenda. No, it's on the email. It's the email. What time? 4.30? Late afternoon. Uh -huh. Get a uh, ratification of the, the chief of police. Yes, Can uh, I get uh, that? Because I, I never received the, 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 the email. Yeah. It's a charter requirement. It's a charter requirement, so. 
And you receive the mail, Commissioner? Yes. You also, all receive no. it? No. Oh, no. Who uh, guilty? Should I share? My question, who guilty? Also, I'm it was guilty. an email sending um, correcting the minutes. The minutes, yes. So I received both. Both were sent. Both were sent. Through the chair. Go ahead, Commissioner Suarez. I agree that both were sent. Yeah, me yes. too. But I opened them up at 6.30 in the afternoon, and I still had to take a shower to come to this meeting. So I could only read practically the subject matter. I couldn't get into the details. So I know they went through. I know that was to add the ratification. And I know that was two minutes that one was supposed to be deleted and the other one was supposed to be replaced by another one. Okay. I had no time at 6 30 before taking a shower to, ha to print that, to read it. So I came here expecting a paper copy a list of those items. Uh, Mr. Attorney? Yeah, Mr. President, at this time, you, you, you're basically on, on, on section number eight, so you have not added or deleted anything to the agenda. So prior to, to debating or considering any, uh, any of those potential additions or deletions, you have to either add them to the agenda or have them removed from the agenda. Well, that's what I just mentioned, that we have an addition <coughs> and I receive it by email, which is item O, if we add it, which is from the Madam Clerk, about the ratification of the department heads. Okay, I make a motion to go to the, to the agenda. I second. second. There is a motion on the floor to add the ratification of the department heads by Commissioner uh, Barreto and second by Commissioner uh, Bergignan and, and Janio. To the chair, what about my objection? The rule is four days. Wait, there Mr. is Mr. President, a motion we Mr. have President, to if this is a requirement under the charter, however, procedurally, it's being added because it, it was wasn't there. But it is however, the, the, it was not on the agenda, it's being added, and if there is a, somebody invoking the four-day rule, uh, I, I will recommend then that at, at this point you basically, uh, the, the item is, Remove it, it? It, it's, it's is not going to be added to the agenda because somebody's invoking the four-day rule. So even if there is a motion, it has to be removed from yes, the agenda oh, oh. if it wasn't sent on time. Once one review. commissioner uh, invokes the four-day rule, mm -hmm. then the item cannot be added to the agenda. Yes, so Thank it's you. A, it's so a, item, all it the is addition is, have been added is, to begin with. is removed from the agenda. Okay. And the minutes. <coughs> and the other thing, too, the minutes. The minutes, too, yes. At this point, I believe that the only four-day rule, the, the, the four-day rule, uh, Commissioner Maroño, it, it, it pertains to item O. Is that correct? The, the all addition. All additions. All additions. So the minutes. Uh, so the cor so the correction. the correction of the minutes are removed too. The, the, yes. let, let me say that the minutes are already on the agenda. The minutes are already on the agenda, so that's it not was necessarily a change. an addition. It is simply an amendment to an, an amendment. existing an amendment. item on the agenda. Okay. So, okay. Commissioner Maroño, you just want to remove item O, the ratification of the department heads, and leave the amendments to the already no. Mr. President, or, or Mr. President. The, uh, uh, addition whatever addition. Yes. Mr. It's President. Not an but this is it's not an addition. It's just yeah. an approval of the amendments made to the already existing items on the agenda. Okay, that's okay. All right. Yes, Mr. So President, the, are okay. the only addition, as I understanding, is item O, oh. which is now being not, not going to be added to the agenda. Mm -hmm. The amendments to the minutes, the minutes, it's, the, it's already an, an existing so item. Agenda. So it, when we get to that item, I believe the clerk has an amendment to, to, to the minutes. Mm -hmm. So that one can, cannot be removed from the agenda unless there is a motion to, to delete it from the agenda. Okay. Well, in that, it's already on the agenda. But it's something I quite don't understand. <coughs> it's, it's supposed to be in the agenda. If for some reason the city clerk forgot or forgot, whatever, it's supposed to be here, that item. It's nothing new. It's supposed to be every single month. That is correct. Uh, Commissioner, there, there have been instances where that item has not appeared on the agenda, even though it automatically should appear. So it, it, exactly. So, but, but in order to be consistent, because sometimes it hasn't been on the agenda, the fact that it was not on this agenda and now is being added uh, within the time outside of the notice requirement of the agenda, 
I, I, so what I, do we need that we don't have to call the city clerk to do every single month? I believe that this commission on more than one occasion has directed the city clerk to just go ahead and make sure that every agenda until all re uh, director uh, and department are ratified. heads are ratified that they appear. So I think that this commission has already done that. Uh, I, I believe the clerk no, said I, it was. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. I have a template that I use for my agendas. I'm going to add that as a permanent item on those agendas. Until. Until. And that is a ratification. Do we need a motion for that too? No. no. Okay, so. Uh, May I meet the president? Hey. Go ahead, Commissioner. Hey. Finite director, please. It's good you come. Hey. This is a request. Later. 20 minutes later, it's okay. Let Wait me read you. it. Let me read it. Let me read it. Let me okay, read go it. ahead. I'm sorry. Item A on, on uh, petitions, uh, communications, and remonstrances is a request of Iberto Pastoriza to address the City Commission of non payment of invoices for the past six months. Cuento to you, you, no mayor, you. Why not pay? For six months, say Pastoriza, every month, every month, every month, and six months, no pay. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, Mayor, uh, the Finance Department received those invoices last week, and I distribute them right away. Uh, staff, the corresponding staff, are entering in the system, and as soon as they are, then the next question is, uh, where are we going to get the money? Because there is no budget to pay those invoices. For six months, every month. To the chair. Could I elaborate on that, please? Uh, Commissioner? No, go, no, go, no, go, please. Uh, Commissioner no, no, Moroño. What I want to know is what invoices. Invoice for what? Pastoriza is no more our. For six months, no pay. Since them, since them, it's been all money to him. From the last By the month? time that he left, it was money on to him, so. Can I? Mr. Can President? I? Go ahead, Commissioner. I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Attorney. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know this for certain, but I believe that. Uh, there may be some some invoices that may go beyond six months. I'm, I'm not certain of that, but there's some from 2013. Yes. Correct. Um, apart from that, uh, I'll remind uh, this commission you approved uh, the services of uh, Wise Sorota for the for an appellate matter. So I believe that some of those invoices pertain to that appellate matter. Then what be so? Tengo el piso. Go ahead, Commissioner. Le estoy diciendo al director de finanzas. And they're also. Es un grandísimo señor. No lo miento. I'm sorry. Pero el señor Pastoriza ha tenido que venir aquí un abogado muy ilustre en la ciudad del en el condado con un nombre bellísimo y él lleva seis meses pasando la cuenta aquí y el señor no es usted, señor abogado. El señor Final directo no le paga de la misma forma que no le está pagando que eso se pasó resolución aquí a las personas que trabajan en el Sony que cada meeting que viene tiene que darle 100 pesos usted no le paga tiene que haber un porqué usted no no le estoy preguntando a él no alcalde no usted con mucho respeto le estoy preguntando a él porque quiero porque no le paga ahí está Cecilia no le paga Ralph yo le estoy preguntando al señor final directo I've looked at these invoices they are, with all due respect, directed to you and directed to Mr. Cuadra. None of those invoices were mailed direct, they were mailed to the city, but they were not directed to either the mayor, myself, finance, or our assistant. And I see you laughing, Mr. or smiling, Mr. Breguignan, but the fact is we didn't get them. I don't I'm know sorry. if we got them, I'm but sorry. we didn't see I'm sorry, it's not Mr. Breguignan, it's Commissioner Breguignan. Commissioner Breguignan, yes. But the point is, we did not get them until the other day. So we can't, we've started the process of entering them into the system, and they'll be paid in due course at that point. Excuse me, Ralph, let me, let me uh, answer you, you know, or entertain the audience and the commission on this issue. Not every bill that the city is uh, receiving goes to, under the name of Mayor Lopez or Mayor Maroño or Mayor Diaz. Sometimes they, the invoices just come to City of Sweetwater. 
Exactly, but if they come, any envelope that goes to the clerk's office, and please correct me, uh, Madam Clerk, but if it comes to the clerk's office, directed City of Sweetwater, attention Commissioner Jose M. Diaz, does that go to Commissioner Diaz's box or does it come it goes, to our box? It goes to his box. We don't open and it. And that's what they're directed that way. We can show them to you. To the chair? Uh, go ahead. Go I just have a question. Yeah. So you had no idea until this moment, until this was on the agenda, that he needed to be paid? I had no idea until early, until late last week when the city clerk presented the, the invoices to me. They had not, not one of those invoices dropped in our, in, in, to either of us or to our secretary. And more importantly, quite frankly, we didn't even get a telephone call from Mr. Uh, um, uh, from Mr. Pastoriza inquiring about this. And the city clerk, your own secretary, has said specifically that in, that any any correspondence that's directed to um, a commissioner and the city of Sweetwater goes into that commissioner's box. If it goes, if it's directed to the um, city attorney, it goes into the city attorney's box. Not one of these was directed to the finance director, or to myself, or to the mayor, or to our assistant Indira. They are being processed today, Indira is here, you can ask her right now. And you can bring her up and she can tell you she's processing these in the ordinary course. But we have, we just received these, I have week, second question. the administration received these late last week. Uh, I have second question. Go ahead, no, 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 I'm sorry, mm -hmm. finance director. Why you not pay? People okay. working in Sony. Why you not pay? Why? Uh, well, I hope you understood the explanation from the chief of staff regarding the, the way Serota invoices. The finance department received them last week. And you know how quickly nowadays we process payments down there, Mr. President. In regards to the, what is your other question, Commissioner? Please. How is the second question? The Sony board. How many do you not pay? For Sony. A I don't know. Again. Cecilia, how many do you not pay? No. Uh, one, one lady. Yes, yeah, uh, The problem is that we would like to know what day of the month you were you were gonna pay us. Like they get paid the first day or the second day or. I'll tell you what, I'll be more than happy to meet with you right now, okay? Uh, as soon as the protocol is complete, as the, paper, as the paperwork is in order, we are pretty good at processing payments in the finance department within 48 hours, and that includes the mayor's signature. Uh, please, please, uh, go, ahead, go ahead. Just a quick question. Yes. So can I ask you, when was the first time that you heard that we had to pay this bill? Uh, which one? Weiss and Sorota. Weiss and Sorota. Last week, late last week, like the chief of staff said. Okay, thank you. May I, Mr. President? Go ahead, boss. Yes. How many years have you worked in my city? Uh, in July, it's going to be... No, how many years have you worked? In July, it's going to be two years. Two years? Yes, sir. Thirty-five. Why necessary appointment to you for see to you? This is impossible. Maybe no appointment, you don't see me. Or another commissioner. Why? I do, can you please rephrase I your received, question? I, I don't received understand the mail, the communication is necessary, appointment to you for C. Why? What are you trying to that say? I, I don't understand. You don't repeat my position. Go ahead. Uh, we don't make the policy here, okay? Uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's uh, give the floor yes, to sir. Commissioner Yanio, please. Okay. I just want to wait on the proper time. Are you going to be here on, you know, the rest of the uh, meeting? Because I have a question for you, but it's no reference to what we're talking about right now. Certainly. You are most welcome to call me, to no, make no, no. an appointment, I'm, to come no, and I'm see me. No I would wait for you if you want no. me to wait for you. No, it's something simple. When it comes to your point for the finance, I just have a quick question. Sure. But no I problem. want to make sure that you're going to be here. I'll be here. Okay. That Don't was, worry. I'll wait. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, you want to <laughs> clarify anything? Yes, again, uh, to clarify what the commissioner is saying, uh, it was brought to my attention on Friday that those invoices had gotten here the day before or on Wednesday. I'm not sure if it was Wednesday or Thursday. The invoices were not getting here for six months. So whoever has communicated that to you that the city's had it for six months is a total farce to lie. Uh, second, as far as the employees are concerned about the, the, the employee of the month, once HR is notified that she gets the minutes that are transmitted from Val to HR, all the employees of the month are, are given their, their $50 bonus. The P&Z members, 
those get processed as soon as that is done by the building director. Until the building director doesn't process those, those don't get paid. Obviously, it'll make it to the finance department until they're not put into the system. They don't get authorized to pay, be paid. I'm not a magician that I can pay things that are not in the system. But so everything takes its due course. Mr. President, go ahead, uh, Mr. Quadra. Just just one last thing on the on the wise or invoices. Uh, I, what the chief of staff mentioned, I, it's accurate. The the uh, those invoices reference both yourself and myself as city attorney. However, I did not see any of those invoices until they were emailed to the clerk last week. Uh, I didn't, at no, at no point did I receive a physical invoice. Now, in order to, to make sure that that doesn't take place in the future, uh, I communicated with Mr. Pastoriza and he will be sending that to the clerk's office and with a copy to me via email. That way we can just go ahead and, and, and forward it to the finance director without any any issue, issue such as this uh, happening again. So I had not seen those invoices uh, until last week. I am certain he has not seen the invoices either. Uh, I would appreciate, however, to be CC'd on that correspondence of if possible. Of course. Thank you. And uh, to add to that, uh, I have received those invoices, but I thought that the city and the mayor were receiving those too. So We have I not received why, any of those why? invoices. Why I'm receiving this, but now, 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 now I figure out system. why because they were addressing them. Maybe it's in their system that way. Still, when I was every month receives a finance director. Every month, say Pastoriza to me. I think what happened is that for the one month that Mr. Pastoriza was city attorney, the contract was executed by you in your capacity as president of the uh, of the city commission. Sweetwater was pro I'm speculating that Sweetwater's probably entered in the system that way and nobody thought to change it. So the invoices would go to you. I believe you thought this what you were copied on the invoices of the other people. Precisely. But we never got them. It's it's an error. Frankly, I don't think it's an error on the part of anybody in this room, but I've I've known Mr. Pastoriza for years. He's got my cell number. He could have called me. But it is what it is. It, they are being it processed. It is a painful mistake. Yeah, it, but they are being processed. All right. Thank you, Ralph. Okay, we move to item okay, 10. Director. Consent okay. agenda. Approval of minutes from January 4th to January 29th, February 1st, February 11th, and February 29th, 2016. Move. Moved by Commissioner Duazo. Mr. President. Mr. President. Go ahead. I believe Madam Clerk may have some... Yes, some I'd amendments like to on this the item. First minutes. Well, this is precisely what you sent us by mm -hmm. email. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the very first is that. The first is that uh, the, they haven't been submitted to you, so you can't approve them. The uh, the minutes on the <clears throat> January fourth meeting. There was one paragraph that was revised, and if you wish me to read it to you, I will. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I actually. No, so okay. Strange. Go ahead, uh, Madam Clerk, yes. whenever you're ready. Thank you. I just had. Okay, under item L of the January 4th agenda, item L read consideration and authorization for mayor to retain law firm for litigation. It was put on the agenda by Mayor Lopez. I had originally just, I usually do action minutes, which basically tells you what action. There was no action taken, so that's what my, my original minutes said. Uh, the minutes now read, President Diaz asked the mayor for a letter of engagement for the mayor's special counsel. Mayor Lopez advised him the letter was received today and is in his office. A disagreement between the mayor, several commissioners, and the city attorney continued over wording in the resolution passed in December authorizing the mayor to seek legal counsel. Continued with an indication by the president and city attorney that the December resolution had been amended to require the mayor to seek commission approval prior to hiring. It was agreed that the mayor and city attorney are to meet in his office 
after the meeting to review the wording in the resolution. A motion offered by Commissioner Moronio to grant authorization died for lack of a second. No commission action was taken. That's the item that uh, we have discussed uh, in the past. Uh, yes, we Mr. approved President. the mayor to retain counsel, but uh, show us a letter of engagement and see what kind of fees he was going to be subject to pay. Mr. President, I, I know that, 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 that some of you, after the fact, were left with the impression that that the item was amendment to require the mayor to bring to bring that engagement letter before this commission. Uh, at that time, it was confirmed that the item was not amend, um, amended to require that. The only thing that ensued was a discussion between some of the members and the mayor as far as providing that but I took it as a, it, it, informational. There was no requirement in, in, in the resolution. There was no amendment to that resolution that, that would have required the mayor to submit that uh, for approval to the commission. The item itself allowed for the execution of any documents in the retention of outside counsel for the mayor. Okay, I want, excuse me one second, Vice uh, President. I want Val, that you request Julio a copy of a DVD of that January 4th meeting because we, we entertained that for a, for, a, for a while. We looked at it, believe me. We looked and at there is Carmen nothing and approved as amended? Uh, no, and we went back to the December meeting as well, which is when the resolution was passed. And the resolution had no amendments made to it. Through the chair? Go ahead, Commissioner. If I remember correctly, we all thought that it was amended, but it wasn't. But the mayor had, if I remember correctly, the mayor said, yeah, I'll bring it before the commission. Yes. He it's said so. But it wasn't included in the resolution, but he never brought it. So, uh, Mr. Attorney, at this point, there is no way to cure this uh, inconceivable mistake. Uh, Mr. President, at that time, yes, there was a lot of discussion at these days. Uh, there was a conversation with the mayor, but at no point was there a motion or a second to to amend that resolution in any way. Well, to my understanding, it was the request from the mayor was approved, subject to bring it back to the commission and see the kind of uh, the com I mean the the firm, the attorney's firm, and the fees that the city was going to be subject to. M Mr. President, I welcome uh, you to review that, that specific, that, that that specific the portion of the, oh, yeah, we, of the it's meeting. On we used to go it's YouTube. on YouTube. It's on YouTube. I would like to go over because the city have uh, financial constraints and, and when we retain uh, this uh, firm, uh, the Genovese and uh, Joblov and forget the other. Batista. And Batista, uh, I met with them personally before hiring them, and that's because they br we brought to the to the mayor and to the commission the type of uh, fees that they were going to impose for their services. But well, Mr. President, the conversation uh, at the commission at, uh, at that particular commission meeting. Yes, you, you requested that, and I believe the mayor basically was willing to, to, to provide that. But I believe it was from an informational standpoint. The resolution was never amended to, 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 to have that the, the okay. execution of any documents for, for the mayor's outside council be subject to, to bringing that item before you. Well, just a minute. Mayor, if... if if the firm that you just retained for this case in relation to the the honoring of the amended budget that this commission passed and uh, the ratification of the department heads that is still pending, 
if if that if you continue though you know moving toward those uh, practices you're gonna continue making the financial restraints of the city deeper and deeper and the city is gonna go in bankruptcy these people now are asking for 14 depositions that imposes a huge amount of money to the case which is simple and 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 I don't think that we have to make things so complex to a point that the city and the constituents are going to be paying monies that they don't have to at this point. Y lo quiero decir en español para la audiencia y para aquellos que están mirando. Las medidas del alcalde López con relación a los problemas legales de esta ciudad se siguen encareciendo y las firmas que han pedido siguen pidiendo dinero, deposiciones, investigaciones, lo cual incide en más gastos de los fondos de la ciudad. Y esto definitivamente lo que va a conducir es a un fracaso fiscal de la ciudad, que el cual ya llevamos varios meses viendo todas las irregularidades que se han cometido con respecto a eso. Uh, ok, there is a... Uh, do I have a motion for item A, the approval of the minutes, oh. including the amended minutes on item A? Mm -hmm. Chair, go ahead, Commissioner yeah, Suarez. Th there was a, a, a paragraph revised on January 4th, but if I remember, there is another minutes that are supposed to be deleted from the agenda. Which, which are those minutes? What date? The February 1st. Defe completely removed from the agenda. Completely removed. Uh, and could I know the reason why? Because I didn't get a chance to finish them. I had to redo the others. Okay. Thank you. Have you read the item, uh, the item B? Do we have a motion or not for the approved. consent agenda? As amended. As amended. That's approval of the minutes, correct? Both, A and B. A and B. A and B. Uh, well, what about what about if we give you time to go over the minutes of uh, January the first, and you bring this to the next uh, commission meeting? Well, you throw them away already? No, those those the, were January reviewed today. January first, February first. February first. Oh, February first. Okay. Okay, there is not a motion on the floor for the consent agenda. So item 10, doesn't have a, a motion, doesn't have a second, and for that reason, it's invalid. Um, we move to item 11. Stop items. Item A, an ordinance of the city of Suarez, Florida, granting a small-scale comprehensive plan amendment for the certain property identified under folio number 25-3031-017-0020, changing the land use category from one to industrial heavy manufacturing to C2, a special commercial, providing for findings of fact, providing for severability, providing for codification, and providing for an effective date. First reading and first public hearing. There is anyone in the audience that want to state any concerns about this item? Please come forward. No one is coming forward. Public meeting is closed. Uh, this is the same property, uh, Mr. Lanza, right? Yes. Move. Second. Through the chair. Uh, there is a move by Commissioner Breguignan, a second by Commissioner Duazo. Open for discussion, Commissioner Suarez. Mr. Lanza, I, yes. I think that probably, more likely, the same yes. co corrections of the previous. Uh, yes, I, I think, um, and through uh, as industrial as, heavy commercial. Yes, it's not just, indus industrial. It's it's for clarification purposes. Uh, it's industrial heavy manufacturing to I two, and it's being uh, C two as a special commercial district. Roll call, Madam Clerk. 
Commissioner Bergen John? Move. I mean, no, oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Oh, Commissioner Barreto? Yes. Commissioner Yano? Yes. Commissioner Moroño? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Commissioner Duasso? Yes. President Diaz? Yes. Item A passed unanimously. We move to item B, an ordinance of the City of Sweetwater, of the Sweetwater City Commission rezoning that certain property identified under folio number 25-3031-017-0020 from 1-2 industrial heavy manufacturing to C-2 special commercial, providing for findings of fact, providing for severability, providing for codification and providing for effective day, first reading and first public re hearing. Meeting is open to the public. No one is coming forward. Meeting, a uh, public meeting is closed. Move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Duasso, second by Commissioner Bergignan. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Through the chair. Uh, Hold on, Madam Chair. Open for discussion. Commissioner just, just, just to be consistent, yes, it's the same. Uh, a, B, and C. The three of them are based on the same. Yes. Uh, Will no. Okay. Uh, what we need to make clear is A and B are the only two that are with the I two heavy industrial industrial heavy manufacturing to C two special commercial. It's only items A and B. And then C has another issue, the but C, we will get there when well, we, we get come there. to the floor. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, Madam Clerk, roll call for item B. Commissioner Barreto? Yes. Commissioner Yano? Yes. Commissioner Maronio? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Commissioner Duasso? Yes. Commissioner Bergignan? <coughs> yes. Commissioner uh, President Diaz? Yes. Item B passed unanimously. And we move to item C, an ordinance of the City of Sweetwater Commission rezoning that certain property identified under folio number 25-3031-001-1240 and 25-3031-001-1230. Why did this in parentheses? The, the reason, and uh, for clarification purposes, when the process was started, uh, the applicant, there are two properties that were originally joined, and uh, as part of the requirement for us, as the rezoning, as part of the whole procedure, uh, we've asked the applicant for all three properties to be joined as a, no, to be joined as a unity of title. So all three okay. properties are, are have been joined in unity of title and recorded through 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 the courts. Okay, so the parenthesis is 25-3031-001-1250. Uh, From RS single family residential district to 1-1 industrial light manufacturing, providing for findings of fact, providing for severability, providing for codification, and providing for an effective date. Uh, date. Uh, first reading and first public reading. This meeting is open to the public. If there is anyone that have any concerns about this item, please come forward. No one is coming forward. Public Move. meeting is closed. Mr. President. Move. There is a motion by, uh, yes. Mr. President, this, this item to, to conform it to the, to the item that, uh, that, that was uh, approved earlier by the local planning agency, we need to make it consistent and, and have an amendment because of a Scrivener's error uh, on, on, on the resolution identifying the the, the new uh, zoning as 1-1, one, one, the correct uh, designation should be I-1. So I that one. would be the amendment. And, and, and also, again, to, to be consistent with uh, the previous meeting, it, there's references on the supporting documentation which reference the IU-1 designation from the county. For clarification purposes, it's I-1 under our zoning district. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lance. So I have a, a, a motion by Commissioner Duazo as amended. Second. Second by Commissioner Maroño. Roll call, Madam Clerk. <coughs> Commissioner Yano. Yes. Commissioner Maroño. Yes. Commissioner Suarez. Yes. Commissioner Duazo. Yes. Commissioner Bergignan. Yes. Commissioner Barreto. Yes. 
President Diaz? Yes, item C passed unanimously as well. We move to item D, an ordinance of the Sweetwater City Commission amending Article 9 of Charter 18 of the Code of the City of Sweetwater, Florida, entitled Towing Services, authorizing a $20 administrative fee to be charged by the city for all vehicles recover, tow, remove, or store at the request of the Sweetwater Police Department, providing a severability clause and an immediate effective day. Mayor Lopez, second reading and public reading. This meeting is open to the public. If there is anyone that wants to express any issues, no one is coming forward. Public meeting is closed. May I make the president? Go ahead, Commissioner. In Dwarf. my opinion, ten dollar, twenty dollars is impossible. For one year. Everybody not have money for pay everything. Twenty dollar, twenty dollar, ten dollar. It's my I won't know in last meeting. But in my opinion, is ten dollar. I move to even with twenty dollar. I second it. There is a motion by Commissioner Maroño and second by Commissioner Suarez on item D, uh, right. approving the $20 uh, proposed on this item. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Moronio? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Commissioner Duasso? No. Commissioner Bergignan? Yes. Commissioner Barreto? Yes. Commissioner Yanya? Yes. President Diaz? Yes. Item D passed uh, 6 to 1. Um, and I understand the concerns of Commissioner Duazo in relation to the cause of this, but um, to what I see is that the only way that the administration can cover all the bureaucratic uh, transactions are uh, imposing the twenty dollars free y lo quiero decir en español para las personas eh, esta ordenanza se refiere a cobrar veinte eh, dólares veinte dólares de uh, a transición administrativo proceso administrativo eh, que se le va a cobrar a las personas uh, para poder recobrar los vehículos que han sido removidos o almacenados mm -hmm. o remolcados Uh, por la ciudad de, por el departamento de policía de la ciudad de Seawater y creemos que eh, 20 dólares cubre ese tipo de transacción a nivel administrativo eh, creo que 10 dólares no estaría uh, suficientemente eh, respaldado por, por el costo de la transacción pero eso es lo que The chair. Go ahead, Commissioner. Wow. Uh, maybe you know uh, who collects the money now? Police Department. So the dispatcher is the one that does it? I have no idea who collects money. You know, Mayor, how they do it anymore? So, Chair, a, I'll explain to you this process. The, the tow company, once they tow, they have to keep a detailed log, and at the end of the month, they will be invoiced by the Police Department, depending on how many tows. Then, if they tow 15 cars, then they will be invoiced for, for 15 times the $20, $300. Good. So they, they, they collect it? Correct. Perfect. They keep the log. They have to keep the administrative log persistent, uh, consistent with state statute. And then at the end of the month, they're invoiced. Perfect. Thank you. Mr. President. Yes, uh, Mr. Attorney. Also for informational purposes, you, you have a similar uh, surcharge for tows that are initiated. Uh, the non-consent. Exactly. Non-consent tows, for example. Uh, somebody parks in front of a house blocking the driveway, if the owner of the house calls the police department, uh, already you, you know, for that, type of, for that type of tow, you already have a surcharge in place. This would make the same surcharge applicable for any tows uh, initiated by the, the city's police department. Perfect. May I? Go ahead, Let Commissioner. Me, what, what company because the car? What company? What do you say? What company? Because they got I don't know. There's two companies right now that are being used off the county rotation. Right, Rent City. 
What do you think? Two registered in the city. Yes, sir. There's two that are registered in the city that are that are we're piggybacking off the county contract. Uh, uh, okay. To the sheriff, uh, Commissioner Suarez. I I just uh, want to express uh, my my agreement with Commissioner Duazo. My in the respect that ten dollars was his uh, proposed fee. But unfortunately, in my opinion, I don't think ten dollars would cover the cost. And even though in the city of Sweetwater we have many working people that mm -hmm. don't have twenty dollars accessible right away, we have a transit through the city of Sweetwater of many other drivers that are not citizens of Sweet Sweetwater. But mostly, ten dollars is not covered the administrative cost of, of that paperwork and all that activity. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. It is what it is. All right, uh, we move to item E, an ordinance of the City of Sweetwater City Commission amending section 14-9 of the Code of the City of Sweetwater, Florida, providing for a certificate of use fee for retail merchandising units, providing a severability clause and an effective day. Mayor Lopez, second reading and public hearing. Meeting is open to the public. There is anyone that wants to express any concerns about this item? No one is coming forward. Public meeting is closed. Move. Uh, moved by Commissioner Duazo. Second. Second by Commissioner Breguignan and Moroño. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Commissioner Duazo? Yes. Commissioner Breguignan? Yes. Commissioner Barreto? Yes. Commissioner Yanyo? Yes. Commissioner Maronio? Yes. President Diaz? Yes. Item E passed unanimously. We move to item F, an ordinance of the Sweetwater City Commission amending section 3-11 of the Code of the City of Sweetwater, Florida, providing for a set of time for commission meetings, providing a severability clause and an immediate effective day. This is Commissioner Janio, second reading and public hearing. If there is anyone in the public who want to express any concerns about this item, please come forward. No one is coming forward. Move. Public meeting is closed. Second. There is a motion by Commissioner Duazo. There is a second by Commissioner Janio. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Duazo? Yes. Commissioner Bergignan? Yes. Commissioner Barreto? Yes. Commissioner Yanyo? Yes. Commissioner Maronio? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. President Diaz? Yes. Item G pass. Is that G? F. No, F pass unanimously. I jot it down before the end of the voting. <laughs> Item G. An ordinance of the Sweetwater City Commission amending Article 10 of the Land Development Code of the City of Sweetwater, Florida, entitled Impact Fees, providing for transportation impact fees expenditures and providing a variability clause on an effective date. Mayor Lopez, second reading and public hearing. This meeting is open to the public. If there is anyone that wants to make any comments about this item, please come forward. No one is coming forward. Move. Meeting second. is closed to the public. There is a motion by Commissioner Duazo, second by Commissioner Bergignan. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Bergignan? Yes. Commissioner Barreto? Yes. Commissioner Yanyo? Yes. Commissioner Maronio? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Commissioner Duazo? Yes. President Diaz? Yes. Item G pass unanimously. Uh, item H, the chair. Commissioner. I'd like to defer this uh, item to the next meeting. H? Yes. Item H is being deferred yes. to the next meeting. So, Bergen? Yes, right. Commissioner Bergen, if um, the next available meeting. I know, I know, I know. You wanted to do some work on this. Right, item. right, right, right. So we we could have it actually ready. Yeah, because we have in case we have. Fast. Okay, the next available meeting. 
Okay. Uh, for the presented against the reading once you finish revising Because if not, then I have to advertise it for second reading again. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, <coughs> for the records, Madam Clerk, this item H is deferred to the next available meeting. We move to item I, a resolution of the mayor and the city commission of the city of Sweetwater, Florida, approving a conditional use permit to allow a car wash at 107 15 Southwest 6th Street, Sweetwater, Florida, 33174, and providing an effective date. Core requirement, Hector A. Flores, applicant, public hearing. May I meet the president? Hector's in here. Uh. <coughs> uh, good evening, ladies good and evening. gentlemen. How are you today? Hi. Good, good. Hey, I'm, I'm here in, in regards to the name and address. change of use for the car wash. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going to ask Carlos to, to uh, entertain Maybe. us because yeah. I remembered in the past. Uh, this was a big issue, and um, actually, Mayor Lopez was a uh, commission president back then, and <laughs> and was the one that uh, brought this issue, and and they just uh, went ahead and, and stopped that car wash from through, from through operating the chair, through the chair. Um, this item is is before you as a conditional use. Uh, the commission uh, previously approved, uh, I think it was an ordinance or resolution, only granting in the in what is I think the old part of Sweetwater two hand car washes uh, throughout the district. Uh, this particular applicant is the gentleman is the same property that for some time it, the gas station on 107th and 6th Street, which there was a, a car wash, uh, which surfaced that. Um, it was there I I illegally, and the applicant has has made a, an effort to to come before you uh, with a set of plans that that were uh, that were provided, and where he's trying to improve the establishment and <coughs> um, and, and and be allowed to use the conditional use. I think yeah, as I part of the recommendations of staff, there were certain criteria: no loud music, and, and which was the staff's recommendation. But. Carlos, I remember back then that I make uh, great efforts to 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 continue having that uh, car wash operating because there were four men uh, providing for their families uh, on that particular place, hardworking people, and finally it had to be you know out of operations. And back then, when I spoke to you, you told me there were issues that uh, there was not uh, enough parking. The, the the applicant has shown the the parking he created an additional space. I think the major issue back then was that hand car washes were not allowed within the city. It was only through mechanical. Uh, there's there's a provision that specifically wouldn't allow hand car washes, and the applicant has provided the additional parking space as as what was one of the other conditions. But uh, as a resolution of that, this the commission had approved a. Uh, an exception for just two hand car washes throughout the city and that's where but originally when when you came to see me regarding this issue one it was just that the hand car wash was not allowed and the second was the issue of the parking which the applicant has complied with May I in, in that is a, the, uh, about the derm uh, issue that they have to have this specific uh, trap to to have all the the applicant is aware you know I think what's before it, it doesn't pertain to that that is a derm requirement which the applicant upon the submittal of, of his documents for permitting for construction permitting will be will be reviewed by derm and through all the applicable agencies and and they will have to do those corrections at that point in time it's May just I? for it's just for the allow of the hand car wash since it's a conditional use one last uh, thing that I want the commission and, and the public to to understand that I, I in no manner wants to oppose to to create jobs for the city. But that's 
in a place that is 107th Avenue. That's our main street. And it's the downtown of Sweetwater. And to what extent the conditions, uh, Mr. Flores, uh, that you're going to create are not going to be detrimental to, to the aesthetics uh, of, of 107th Avenue? With, with all, and, and I'll speak before he speaks. The applicant has met with us numerous times, um, his representatives. They are presenting, or they have presented uh, or in conversations, uh, detailed drawings that where they're going to basically refurbish the whole, the whole garage, the whole station, and it's not even going to look anything similar to what what is there now. And and obviously that if if the applicant follows through with with that. I even I spoke uh, one moment, Mayor. Uh, I spoke to you, Flores, and you remember that we <coughs> were analyzing the the uh, feasibility of of being able to wash the car and then exit through the uh, adjacent uh, uh, exit, but I think that's too narrow and there is no that's room for, for that. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Dwight. Five feet, six inches, I guess. Yeah. Clark, every day is clean. I go for wash my car. Well, my opinion is yes, but let me question Carlito, Carlo, sure. perdón. <laughs> the gas station of demolition. Uh, I can't say you would have to ask the owner regarding that. Commissioner says asking. No, you no no, Gallo, please. May I meet the no, he doesn't. Gallo, I don't know. I, I, I don't know I, why demolition or no demolition. I, I, no, the no. Station no. Being no. Demolished. They're they're doing a complete remodeling of uh, uh, of from the conversations I've had with his representatives. They're doing a complete remodeling facelift um, as part of the DOT expansion of 107 uh, they're going to be losing some pumps and and they're and they're they're reorganizing the pumps and and enhancing the, the building and you approve well they haven't submitted anything from the initial conversations I don't have an objection I think it's going to be an improvement for the city my vote uh, yes yeah my vote yes Mr. Chair, go ahead come in. I just <coughs> have one question yes, uh, we approved we approved the hand car washer a long time ago didn't we have some hour restriction because there's an apartment right next door? I think I think in, in here it just says limited to the operations of I think it's from of day the gas from, station. Well, it's it should stay or should have stipulated would be from uh, day to dusk because there is no lighting in the car wash, um, and it's and that was one of the items. Hold on, give me a second. I can say seven in the morning. You don't want them at seven. Hours of operations will be leaving from eight a.m. to six p.m. Eight to six. Eight to six. Okay. That's what we have as as staff recommendations. There are nine items of which we recommend. You know, have staff recommendations for. Uh, I can read them out. Our hours of operation will be limited from eight a.m. to six p.m. There will be no additional occupants in the existing building as a result <coughs> of allowing the proposed car wash operation. Only one vehicle at a time may be serviced. At no at no time will there be more than two vehicles on site. No loud music or noise should be emanated from the car wash operation at any time and the applicant will obtain building permits to legalize um, there's an existing former dumpster enclosure which was later converted to storage car wash operations must ob must obtain derm approval as part of the building permit application uh, that the use variance will expire if any permit has not been issued by the building official within six months of the date granting of the use variance or, or date of any final court order granting or modifying the use variance in accordance with the specific plans for which that use variance was granted. That the use variance will expire if the permit is issued within the required time period if work has not been completed and a certific certificate of occupancy has not been issued under that permit within one year from permit issuance state. And failure to comply from the above conditions will result in revocation of the conditional use permit and related variances. No music, no radio. Move through to the chair. Uh, 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 request of go ahead, uh, Commissioner Lopez. Oh, Mayor Move. Lopez. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, Mayor, I just want to clarify something that was said before. You said that I had stopped the car wash. I had no point in time stopped the car wash there. If you but recall what had issue, happened there. The issue was brought. There was a gentleman that was on, on 107th Avenue around 25th Street or, or somewhere there about 20th Street 
that he had asked for a conditional use on a car, hand car wash and came to the city and complained about the car wash at Hector's garage at the time that I believe the, the gentleman that was running at the time, I think was Jimmy. Jimmy. Yes. Right. Jimmy. Yes. And at no point in time did I ask to stop the car wash. What? what no, I maybe, maybe I, uh, I miscommunicated my message. Right. He yeah. was uh, being you and the commission uh, as a commission what president I did that was, the issue was brought to Correct. To what I did was bring an amendment afterwards to the land, land use ordinance to be able to allow hand car washes to be able to remedy <coughs> this. That's the only thing I wanted to clarify. Okay, there is a motion by uh, <coughs> Commissioner Duazo, <coughs> second by <coughs> Commissioner Breguignan and Janio. Truly chair. Go ahead, Commissioner Suarez. Uh, Mr. Lanza, uh, that paragraph you are reading, uh, I don't find it. The one that I found is the one from Mr. Flores saying that the hours will be limited to the yeah. same hours of operation of the service station. That's if, the one I found. If you look, there should be an attached memorandum by the Planning and Zoning uh, as a recommendation from staff to the Planning and Zoning Board. February 29th? Um, February, yes, 29th. What page and paragraph, please? If you please? look at page 4, staff recommendations. Uh, I, don't page. Have, I don't have page 4. <laughs> No wonder. My <laughs> clerk. Impossible that you that don't find it, Commissioner. I don't have page four. <laughs> that might be on, on my behalf that we made the copies and, and it might yeah. be just missing. But definitely it reads. It's that what it I read exactly all the, the items. Daylight time. It says, no, it specifically so, says hours will be limited from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So I take your word for it. But <laughs> I don't you. have page four, gentlemen. <laughs> oh yeah, but okay. in summertime, the, the, it is already uh, eight o'clock. It's still daytime, and we are trying to polish our cars to go out. That with is our wives. that is staff recommendation. This this commission can can change it according to to what they feel necessary. I have a question for Mr. Flores. Yes, sir. I, I noticed that the overhang that you are going to install, Mr. Flores, no it, it, it has the angle instead of away from the from the wall, the angle of the overhang is toward the wall. Yes, we're going to demo is, that and we're going to... Is that to get the water to your building instead of to your neighbor? Yes, that that was erected there by my tenant. We are demolishing that and we're putting a correct uh, canopy, awning. The awning we have yes, sir. that angle... Fa yeah, we'll face towards the building. To what? In your, your building? Yes, sir. I know very it's clear. not in the plans, yes. Yeah. That's very clever. <laughs> so the water doesn't run out to your tenant. Si. It runs out to you. Si. <laughs> Why, well, that, that's, that's not, uh, no, that is not favorable to him, but that's <laughs> the way it should be. No, I mean the president. Go ahead, Commissioner Duasso. Between the car wash a beating. Similar Flores. Yeah. Flores has five complaints, but it's no radio. In my opinion, they can have it, but not loud. You know, see the man he like working, working, necessary working. No hay trabajo y usted está implementando un trabajito allí. ¿Por qué vamos a negárselo? Siempre ha habido limpieza. Yo me he lavado mucho carro ahí. Okay, so uh, it was a motion by Commissioner Duazo, a second by Commissioner Beguignan and Janio, and we are expecting that. A vote. All in favor say aye. 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 May I have a clarification? Item I pass seven to zero. May I have a clarification? Does that include all of the recommendations of staff? As including the recommendations of the building official, yes. Thank, Thank you. you for bringing that up because I think that that's important to to consider all those issues. If that later on, they after they present the site plan and all that, I think that we should provide for the uh, daylight saving uh, time because at 8 o'clock is daylight. So during the summer, uh, I, I don't know, I would say from uh, sunrise to sundown <coughs> instead of a, or 8 a.m. until sundown. May I present? Please. Clean, very clean. Si, señor. No galo, no galo. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> si, senor. I assure you. What do you think, Carlos? For, 
whichever whatever this board decides is obviously i know daylight saving time but it would be nice to extend it it's just for clarification purposes what if it's going to be from eight to six or if it's going to be from eight to to dusk to uh, there's no lights and there's no lights proposed in in the drawings that they have submitted for the car wash so obviously if you're more than welcome to do it to dusk that's up to you I will I will uh, encourage my colleagues uh, to extend it until uh, dusk. Mr. President, this commission already took a vote on this item, and I believe that the current requirement is from but 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. You, you know, in order to, to be able to, to make that change, to reopen it, uh, to go ahead and bring the item back, reconsider, and once you reconsider the item, then at that point you can go ahead. Okay, and do I, I move to open the uh, the item to and open it and reconsider it. Second. And there is a second by Commissioner Bregignan. Okay, we are discussing. All in favor say aye. 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 The item I is <laughs> reopened for considerations uh, to extend the opening time until dusk. From 8 a.m. until dusk. Ya cuando empiece a oscurecer, ustedes tienen que cerrar. Is that okay? Make it's you happy? Yeah, made me happy. Thank you. It yeah. makes wait, me wait, happy. Wait, 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 Mr. Sometimes seven seven the day. Por eso. Si a las ocho es de día, ellos pueden estar trabajando. That's what we want. Move yeah. to amend item I. Second. And and approve it. Okay, there is a motion by Commissioner Berguignan, second with by Commissioner Diaz. To amend and approve. To approve with, with item the, I as amended to extend uh, working hours until dusk. And the beginning of the working hours, the stays is 8, 8, 8 a.m. 8, 8 a.m. until dusk. Okay. All right. Why no second? No. Okay, we move to item J. Thank you very much. Okay. No, it was a move, motion by Commissioner Beguian, second by Commissioner Diaz. All in favor say aye. 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 Item I is amended. Uh, I mean, it's approved as amended. To extend Thank you very much. timing from 8 a.m. till dusk. Congratulations, Hector. All right, thank you very Congratulations, much. Congratulations, sir. Thank I you. hope that you made a nice, beautiful yeah. play. And uh, music, you can put music, but no, 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 please. No, no, pero por qué lo hace? No, no, has complained. Mr. Flores is the building allowed. No. But why? You imagine those poor guys working all day long without music? <laughs> no. Well, you're gonna I say have no. To, okay, Sometimes. you're going to have to provide them with uh, Red Bull, all, you know, Red Bull all day long. No. Okay, we move to item J. Thank you. No. All right. Maybe your, your in this, maybe in a meeting you have Mr. Flores in here. I'm going to complain. You have to give him ear plugs. No, okay. it's another Flores. Uh, item J, a resolution of mayor and the city commission of the city of Sweetwater, Florida, approving a conditional use permit to allow a pawn shop at 114.00 West Florida Street, number 109-110. Sweetwater, Florida 33174 and providing an effective day code requirement LTC South Florida LLC applicant public hearing. Uh, this meeting is open to the public. There is anyone to have that have any objections or any concerns about this uh, item that provides for a conditional use or Permit to allow a pawn shop on 114th and West Flagler. No one is coming forward. Uh, public meeting is closed. To the chair. Go ahead. Come in. Uh, I, sorry, Orlando. Hey. Go ahead, Mayor. Commissioners, I, I met with the owner. Can't recall your name for the life of me. Hey, going back about a year ago. <coughs> What's that? <coughs> there you go. Shane, uh, going back about a year ago, um, I don't know if you want to speak on your on on your item, but um, he purchased a pawn shop recently. Uh, the pawn shop had actually transferred ownership. And correct me if I'm wrong, because we're going back about a year since we spoke uh, twice before him, and that they had never come before the commission to apply for the conditional use as well as required by our charter. Uh, he actually was doing the right thing and found out that he needed to apply for conditional use, yet the two previous owners had not done so. 
Um, I applauded him for it because he did it. He could have actually gone under the radar and he could have transferred ownership without the commission ever being notified of it, you know, the city by itself. Uh, he's actually transformed that pawn shop from, I don't know, um, let's call it a relatively undesirable business to a beautiful shop right now. So I really applaud him for making it a, a true asset to the, to the, to the community and, and I'm asking the commissioners to take that into account. Move. Uh, sir. Move. Sir. The floor. What is uh, what is the square footage of that place? More or less. I don't want you to. Uh, I believe it's 14, 1,400 square feet. More or less. I mean, yeah, give and take. All right. So this being an this is has been an existing uh, pawn shop, yes. jewelry or pawn shop or both, both, both. both. and now has changed to eyes uh, ownership and they never really. Okay, I think. Go ahead, Carlos. Let me enlighten. Um, this came about as as the applicant was, as the mayor said, was trying to do the right thing. And my department was, or I was the person who flagged it. Uh, apparently, um, back in uh, probably, I'm trying to see the date there. In 1991, November 4th, uh, there was a, a public hearing regarding the same uh, pawn shop secondhand dealer uh, back in uh, November 4th, 1991, which was granted by the commission back there. It was for space 105. Um, somewhere through through the years, there has been um, other business. Uh, the business has been sold, I think, numerous times, and, and, and they may correct me if I'm mistaken. And if, and it flew under the radar because there was already a, a license granted there. The applicant at this point in time, what triggered is this before you is they're moving to another location. It's it's a different. It's not 105 as what was previously previously granted. Um, the applicant has done everything that he's he's been more than jumped through the hoops and done everything necessary. Uh, I just I, I thought that it's, it's relevant to bring this before you because it's a use that was previously granted, and and he's just moving from one location to another within the same space. Within the same through a yeah. chair. Thanks. You approve? Yes, uh, my rec recommend. Our recommendation I recommend. was to approve. Uh, no, I move. But let 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 let, let me. Go ahead, Commissioner. When you say pawn shops, it's sometimes terrible. Eh? Do you know why? Many, many robots go to pawn shop and have their own. Actually, it's it's ironic. The, back in November, in October 21st, 1991, the correspondence, it, it reads to Manuel Duazo Supervisor Maintenance Department <laughs> from Banji. <laughs> 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 so it, it's ironic that it's before you. Uh, no, no, I, I approve, I approve. <laughs> I move. Okay. Through the chair? Go ahead. Go I ahead. just want to say something. I mean, I applaud you. You've gone above and beyond. And you've done, you, from what the mayor said, you've restored the place to a nice condition. <coughs> um, I Last time we voted on, on a pawn shop here, I voted against it. Yes. Uh, because of the issues that it was bringing at that time. We had a really bad element coming from outside the city, and it was it was an issue. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'll second the motion to approve this one, but just let it be known that at least as far as I'm concerned, I really don't want any more pawn shops in the area. So I think I, we have enough to do the job. That mm -hmm. through, through. Yes, sir. Go ahead, uh, Mayor. What, what triggered is it here in, in part, uh, also to reiterate what uh, Carlos Lanza was saying, a, the conditional use is necessarily given to the to the business itself. It's given it's it's, uh, it's given to the owner. So if he were to transfer ownership as well, the new owner would have to apply for it for it again. And it had changed ownership several times. Right. Um, you know, and nobody had ever done this. And you know, going on, you know, adding to what Commissioner Duasso was saying, there are some pawn shops that are undesirables. A uh, what. Well, Shane Bott was an undesirable pawn shop, and he's turned it into a beautiful business. And I've driven by there. I haven't gone inside, but I've driven by there several times, and it's a beautiful business right now. I, I, I saw that there were, I'm sorry, to chair. I saw that in, well, at least the paper I got, if I correct, I think they own three or four other ones, and they've done a great job. No, I think he owns a little bit more than that. Yeah. So May I make the president? Through the chair. Go ahead. Uh, uh, and this is something that I need to, if it's something that the commission wants to entertain, on the previous, when it was originally granted, 
there were conditions and I think I've, I've reached out to the applicant and, and let them know of the conditions and w one of the uh, the conditions was that um, that they should not store park or maintain vehicles within the shopping center premises where business is conducted in other words uh, the parking and or storing of vehicles should be at an off-site location and I think it it, it was more and they will be taking vehicles as 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 a possession or, or collateralizing it and and I think the applicant has said that they're not going to be entertaining that type of business but I, I, I feel that I need to bring this they're not, they're not I have just one question uh, it's just uh, jewelry no, it's everything journal merchandise tools electronics guns no, no. no guns <coughs> do the chair uh, hold on. Question. This question maybe is not necessary, but Carlo, I'm sorry. It's my position. Clarification record the people open punch up. Our, our recommendation from staff no, is. Number one recommendation. Number two, record policy. That I can't determine that's that. That's not, that is not something that. that it's within my my authority to you know that has to be as a condition or or through through Not this. Sure. Go ahead, man. A all pawn shop owners are are regulated by the state of Florida, and they must pass both local as well as federal backgrounds. So if he's applying for both a pawn license in the city as well as the county and the state, he's passed both state and federal backgrounds. Good chair. Yes. He, now that you kind of brought up the parking thing, because I don't know all the legality of it. I notice a lot of times what people are doing now when they can't put signs out, they'll get a pickup truck and put a big tripod of wood that'll say whatever, pawn shop or cafeteria or whatever. Is that allowed? Or? Um. Yeah, because it gets to a point that you got like seven of them in the same parking lot and it really looks they're, like a circus. They're, uh, as part of our ordinance, it's, it's not prohibited or allowed. I think there's other stipulations in terms of uh, if you are to post a sign of your business on, on a vehicle, it has to meet a certain criteria and, and has to have certain uh, specifications. Um, I know that's a big issue with parking vehicles. And there's nothing in our ordinance that I'm aware of, and I could look into it and, okay. I, and I'll confirm and I'll reach and I'll okay. get back to you. Thank that you. I'm aware of, there's nothing that I, I, I'm aware of. But I'll, I'll look into it. Thank you. Okay, for item J, there is a motion by Commissioner Duazo, there is a second by Commissioner Breguignan and President Diaz. Wrong All in favor say no, no, aye. No, please, wrong call. Why should I do that, uh, Commissioner? The vote is very if important, is, wrong there call. There is anyone that wants to say no, they can say no. Everyone in favor say aye. 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 Everyone's favors. So it's a seven to zero. Item K. Sometimes resolution necessary or wrong call. Well, it's my we opinion. Didn't see, we didn't see divided Not opinion, for now, so. for next. A resolution of the mayor and the city Mr. commission of the city of Sweetwater, Florida. Just, just to confirm, that is with the conditions outlined by? By the building official. <laughs> Congratulations, Shane. Thanks a lot. Welcome to the city. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item K. A resolution of the mayor and the city commission of the city of Sweetwater, Florida, authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Kings Loggers Baseball Inc. and providing an effective day, Mayor Lopez. My goodness, we need desperately um, the someone that builds <coughs> a good baseball team in the city of Sweetwater. Or at least baseball. Alan uh, is a little bit more practices. versed uh, on this than I am. Um, this is something similar to what we had preceding you, Alan. A couple of years ago, we had rented the baseball facilities to a former corporation, I can't remember what it was, a, and they ran and they brought in a baseball field to have a true baseball team and baseball camp inside the city. Um, this gentleman, Renee, Renee, if you'd like to step forward and say a little bit about your business and everything. I can't remember your last name, sorry about that. Was that? Ramirez, Renee Ramirez approached the city and, and Alan, um, what we are currently collecting in baseball, a field rentals is approximately $1,200 a month. A Renee's proposition is to pay the $1,200 a month. 
uh, do the upkeep on the grass, on the clay. He's going to repair the batting cages as well as that are very distressed. Um, I think that's it right now. Eh? The bullpens as well. The bullpens as well. Yes. Yeah, so well, I have a question. Uh, Commissioner, uh, <coughs> you're director of maintenance or director of park? I'm director of two. I'm director of public two. works, and I'm the interim. Tell to me two. I'm trying to answer. Please. Why park Saturday and Sunday close? El parque por qué los sábados y domingos está cerrado y no juega nadie allí? Well, si usted director del parque también, ¿qué me dice usted de eso? Well, because of uh, budgetary constraints, so we don't have employees. I mean, no, al pueblo. Sunday. Um, you asked, I'm answering you. Good evening, sí. commissioners. Uh, this is something that we've been trying to achieve for the last. You're the director years. of park. I'm the interim director of parks. Yes. yes. Why is our on Sunday close? Why? I ratified as parks director. <laughs> as interim, I believe. Yes. No, acting, 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 acting. Yeah. acting. Yeah. I think. Yeah, no, the park is open. I mean, the gates no, are open. No, Saturday closed. There's no employees in the uh, in the office on Saturdays and Sundays. Mi the park is open closed. to the public. No, the gates are open. The gates are open, and the park is open to the public on Saturday and Sunday. Can we get to the matter at hand? Go ahead. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, uh, yeah, no. uh, this is something, uh, uh, Vice Mayor, that you're quite aware of. We we were trying to get uh, somebody to come in and run an academy. This is since uh, I was interim parks director when Quintero uh, left uh, before we hired Pablo. Uh, it was something that we wanted to do. Uh, when Pablo came on board, he tried running it himself and uh, with no success. And uh, we've been trying to do it. We've gotten uh, proposals from, from several other organizations None of them as complete uh, as this, and none of them offering to pay the $1,200 a month plus take care of all of the facilities. So at this point, it would relieve us from, from our expense. Uh, we have a part-time employee there that works about 30 hours a week maintaining the fields and uh, you know the lines uh, when they're going to use the fields and, and, and attempts to, to give some uh, lessons uh, when kids show up. Uh, he's not qualified to do so. Um, this is a pretty complete contract. I think you have a copy of it from King Sluggers. Uh, well, we just received it when we... Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. This is the... Uh... Yeah. Move for the cushion. Uh, so what kind of... Uh, there is a problem here from the past. Uh, every time we give a contract to someone, it's been a total disaster. Uh, our families, our parents, they don't have the type of income to pay high uh, fees a, for the services. There's a provision in there's, the contract. There's a provision in the contract that all Sweetwater residents will continue paying the same the thing same as amount. charged for the current baseball program, which is not, I, I don't quote me, but I think I believe it's $96 for $36 enrollment. 95, and 96. that's in here as well. So Sweetwater uh, residents will continue paying the same thing for a defunct okay, baseball Mayor, program. Let me explain what was going on in the past too. That they bring their their uh, first class uh, players and then they give a couple of gloves and two baseball uh, bats to the kids from Sweetwater and tell them, okay, play on the back or play on this side. And they were really uh, uh, segregated from the, from the nice practices. And I'm gonna be honest, only and only when Evelio Hernandez was brought here for the first time. Oh, yeah. That part was full of different age children in baseball, and parents and, and, and mothers and parents and fathers, they were applauding and they were greeting and cheerleading uh, their children. And it was a beautiful, beautiful community event every afternoon. Now, that's what I expect. Uh, things doesn't happen from one day to the next. But I really appreciate if you can make uh, that program so alive as it used to be in the past. Through the chair. Go ahead, Commissioner. That's exactly. Uh, my son used to play here at the league before that we had Sweetwater in it. And that's the only time that I saw that it progressed. The kids from the neighborhoods played. We even helped pay for some of the other kids that couldn't afford to you know, play and stuff. We always took up. We used to do the barbecues there. We used to do everything. And uh, we've tried three or four different academies. It's nothing against King Sluggers. I don't even know them. 
uh, but this it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And well, and what happens is that just as you see here in the contract, there's a part that says. Uh, the term exclusive shall prohibit the use of baseball facility by individuals for not-for-profit recreation or city for recreational programs. And what happened was that we had, for example, in the prior administration, we had um, the PAL program that was going very well with the soccer, and they were going to move into baseball. And I think it was free for the kids. And we had many of the officers participating, and, 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 and there were their days and nights when I went by there. And that program seemed to work. Um, I guess that you well, people didn't want to do it. Um, yeah, all, all I can say is that for the last two and a half years since I've been here, uh, we, we haven't awarded a contract to anybody other than if the short time that Pablo was here, he he did so. Um, it didn't and, work out. And if and if he did, it didn't work. But but for that, I mean, the same reason also when Evelio was there afterwards, uh, he took over the pro program and and that didn't work either. But uh, notwithstanding that, uh, what we have right now is absolutely nothing. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, so my opinion is, and again, nothing against King's Luggers, but my opinion is, we need to hire somebody in the park, running the park that can do this. It's not rocket science. No, and, it's not. And it used to work. It, it's uh, back it in took the day. considerable expense to to do it correctly. No, it was eighty six dollars. We got on the uniforms, oh. the insurance, balls, bats, everything, and. It was great, and everything everything worked out. People <coughs> participate in the community. The police also participate. Some of the commissioners, everybody will go out there and help out, including the parents, and it works. We have to come back to kind of the grassroots. We tried this program. Man, we've done this three or four times. Mm -hmm. We brought professional baseball players. We brought you name it, and it doesn't work. Well, the parks have you know needed about two thousand dollars worth of clay for a long, long time. Uh, that's, well, that's not budgeted. We, um, we had clay and, and we did the lines and we did the grass. You did the grass the last time. Um, no, the we, we field do, is looking pretty good we when do the value We, when we do what we can pass. with the resources available. I'm just saying, that with, you know, if, if you want to compare apples to apples, we, we don't have <coughs> the budget to spend $2,000 on clay. It's sorely needed. I, I wouldn't put my son on that field. That the rocks are showing through uh, the clay. The clay has washed away. No uh, has been that way for quite a while. Um, this is something that this organization is willing to do to bring the park back up to snuff. Uh, and, I, and I'll let you address those concerns. He, I think, is entitled you know, to What's going to happen, too, also, like when I grew up, you'd go to the park, and if the, the team wasn't playing there, or you could even play with them a lot of times, but if it was open, you can go in and play on the field. And basically what this says is people are not going to be able to go and play on their own if it's time that they have scheduled, even if they're not playing. So there's a lot of issues where, you know, four kids want to get a bat and a glove and do that instead of computers and hanging out in their room uh, or doing something bad on the streets, then they basically can't do it either. Yeah. Well, I, I think I'm a, I'm a proponent of organized sports. And, and right now, that's not what we have in parks. That's what he would bring to the table. Right. But I think I, I think the city throughout the years have shown that we can do it. It's just a matter of are we willing to. If we're still <coughs> playing this game about the budget and the money, that's mm -hmm. bull. We get the, the the PAL League has baseball, bats, they have a trainer that they got donated with that has everything. They used to travel and they everything. Mm -hmm. We had Coca Cola donate a, a trailer to have the, the food and I would go and barbecue just about every other week. So this is something the city can do if we wanted to. We just since we're not in the administration, mm -hmm. we can't dictate that. But okay, I, I'll I'll Man. let him. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not nothing against you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Scott, hold on, hold on, Commissioner. Uh, no, I have a question to Alan, please. Mr. Alan, yes, sir. You're very important people. To the parliament. Okay. This is impossible. It's my opinion. Why? Why el flaco? ¿Por qué usted tiene que trabajar haciendo acera y no el flaco? Hable con el medio para que le ponga el flaco. Usted no sale de las aceras porque otros no lo saben hacer y usted la dirige y lo está haciendo constante. Estoy hablando para mi pueblo que lo está viendo hacer acera, al director de finanzas y al director del parque interino. ¿Por qué no habla usted con el medio? Usted es un hombre muy importante con dos departamentos y el medio está en disposición de ayudarle a usted y ayudar a la ciudad para que usted no se dedique a la acera y esté en el parque y esté haciendo cosas de mantenimiento. 
well, de otra forma no puede the, the mayor has a estoy hablando así para mi pueblo uh, uh, que es la que me pregunta muchas veces and, uh, and, and that's what we're doing you know, anything that requires skilled labor oh, that one employee that, that the mayor allowed me to bring back and myself take care of why name a flag you recommend no, you recommend you say to me you recommend sure, I would love to have a lot more skilled why labor why not talk to the mayor uh, well, we have. We're in the position. Uh, well, we have. And I help to you. Maybe you have a chance for maintenance, for pack, for uh, I don't know why. Maybe another director, three directors. I don't know why. But why? Hable. Yo creo que el señor así para mi pueblo. We have talked about. Yo creo que el señor Orlando López en eso lo haría. Naturalmente, no nos pone. Estamos sin secretaria. Llevamos una pila de meses sin secretaria y hay una serie de empresarios en la ciudad que me llaman porque no me contestan, no tenemos secretaria los únicos en el condado y es posible que en el estado que no tiene secretaria siete comisionados sin secretaria y teníamos una sola el medio la sacó nos dañó a nosotros o se dañó él Maybe I can start answering the phone also. <laughs> yo hablo muy claro I'll be happy to. Sir, can you come to the podium and, and explain me more or less what is the range? Sure, good of, evening. Thank you. For you're gonna me. be in the park every day. Yes, yes, myself. <laughs> to answer his question about the PL, um, I was born here. I've been playing baseball for three years. My parents are three years old. <coughs> I've been in baseball for about 30 years. Um, baseball's changed a lot. The whole PL, the whole RBI programs that they've had before doesn't exist. Now it's all uh, travel baseball. So in other words, the kids of your community are not getting the proper training in baseball because now you just put a team together and you go travel and they don't teach baseball anymore. I played here years ago. Con Patato, con Pipiolo. Pipiolo was here years ago. My brother played, I played. Yes, it was more organized. Now you have the fields are being rented and regardless of city, the city kids cannot use them anyways. So, and I, like I was going back to, to travel. There's not that anymore, and that's what I'm trying to bring back. The whole academy where everybody's going to get the opportunity to, to learn how to play the game. Because for me, I played at all levels. I played at high school. I played at Miami Senior High. I played college. I paid for my degree, and I kept on to play professional baseball. But baseball gave me that opportunity. The PLs and all those, you just get random people to do that work who really don't know what they're doing. They're not giving the kids the proper training to get to those levels. Every park in Dade County has leagues, but they don't have anybody teaching baseball. That's what we are precisely asking for. And I'm not going to treat anybody different. To me, they're kids. And the reason why I'm getting into it, I was in it for 30 years. I have an eight-year-old son that we play now, but I see that it's not being taught. So I want to teach the kids the way they taught me, to be able to give them the opportunity to go to college and get their studies paid for, like I did. That's why I'm here. And like I said, everybody's going to be the same, whether it's... Like I had mentioned in, in, in the contract, you guys have a, a 96, uh, they charge $96 a year, which is unheard of because Evelio would do it because Evelio was retired and he was a, a, an employee here. But when you teach baseball and you're not an employee here, it doesn't cost $96 a year. And if you're going to give them proper training, $96 a year ain't going to give you proper training. The whole family thing, yes, I love it. I love this about baseball because. We all get together, the families join, the kids know each other, the friends you meet now, the friends you meet later, and they're still friends. So it's you give these kids an opportunity to, to, to know more people in the world and, and, and be somebody, because baseball does it to you, the sports do it to you. To me, sports is just as important as school. You have the problems now where kids are being bullied. Why? Because they're home all day on a computer, and they don't have no social skills. They don't have any. <coughs> the schools are taking away the physical education. That's why you got obesity problems. And me, the way I give back is by teaching baseball. I have a lot of baseball knowledge. I will bring in the Marlins. I'll bring in all the other entities to work because the Marlins have a program where they come and they help out, but they're not going to help out the whole year. They'll come and help out one day. But who gives these kids the proper training? You don't but learn that's, baseball. That's inspiring. Right? You know, that inspires them. Yeah, you don't, yeah, of course, it inspires them, but they don't maintain it. And nobody, who's going to give these kids the proper training to actually try to get somewhere? That's why I'm here. And I see the park where I played, my brother played, and there's nothing going on. It's uh, teams <laughs> are coming from outside.
to train and pay for it, but really you're not doing nothing for the community for those kids. Go ahead, Commissioner. Oh, um, you know, you kind of convinced me. Uh, I'm willing to try it one more time and see what happens. This will you know, put the nail in the coffin. If it doesn't work, I hope it does. I really liked it before when it would work. Um, the only thing that I would like is if we can strike the part that the city cannot use it. Like if we get to get, like, you know, somebody calls you up and says, listen, you're not going to use it on Thursday. Do you mind if we have... Oh, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with, with anybody using it. The only problem is if you let anybody come in, then you have the kids that are paying from the city, and you're practicing, and there's other kids there. No, so I'm saying like a non-use day. It's, you know, the mayor calls and says, listen. No, I, I, and we still have the right of, to use it for 4th of July, the Christmas, our events and right. everything. No, but I mean, even if you say, hey, you want to set up a softball game or something. and Well, the field doesn't let you use. The people over 14 years old can't play there. So you can't do adult software. You have okay. to do youth softball, right? Because the, the fences are, are not. Big sure, believe me, we used to play, and <laughs> nobody went over the fence. Really? <laughs> but I said, That's well, not the the and it was, it was ten, yeah. it was, it was ten years ago. <laughs> so I don't think that now it's gonna go no. right oh. behind <laughs> third base. But with there me, kids, there's, there's no problem. So listen, okay. I no need to use it. You need me to help you on anything? I don't have a problem with it. It's just that we've had issues with people and technicalities. Right. Of course. The contract says this. I'm not like that. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Attorney. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I think that uh, what Commissioner Bergnian brought up and what Mayor Lopez was referring to, um, relative to the city being able to use the baseball facilities at certain times where where the where they're not being used pursuant to the contract, we may have to amend that section because the, the way it reads right now, it's basically exclusive, and the, the city time. may not be able to. To, to, to use it. That's the way it currently reads. So we would. We should amend uh, it. We'll amend it uh, if. Um, For our own activity. To basically uh, that, that any use by the city will be coordinated with uh, with King's Loggers uh, right. in advance. So it, 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 I believe that kind of takes care of that particular issue and we can. All right. Okay. Uh, well, we I move can. to approve with uh, amending um, the use. The use. That, that, that any use by the city of the, of the baseball facilities will be coordinated in, in advance with uh, or the park slaughters. or the park for that matter because we use the fields for 4th of July. So like when it talks about exclusive means another academy, not really the city. Right. Because if you just let another academy come in there, then, you know, that's, that's really why the exclusive is. Yes, but there's, language, your improvements. Right, right. But there's language that excludes the city. We just want to make sure that Which it's clear. I, I don't have a problem with no, As long as they don't tell me that's the same money. Hey, listen, you know, I want to use it today. That's the only problem. 4th of July, Christmas, a couple of Things, you know? Basically, holidays as the main. Yeah. So, uh, on item uh, K, do also move for discussion. Uh, Breggy make a motion also. So, the item K is being moved by Commissioner Duasso and Commissioner Breguignan. Second. I second as well. As amended. Commissioner Janio uh, and Commissioner Diaz as amended. Uh, having in consideration that whenever there is an activity, uh, they can uh, it will be coordinated, coordinated with, with the King's Loggers uh, LLC. Part director, uh, please. You. No, part director, no. Final, final, please. Thank you. You pay only one salary to Alan. You pay only one salary to Alan. We, we, no? we have it. Or another working free. Hold on, let's no, vote. tengo let's la pregunta. Vote. Sí, pero vamos a votar lo del aire de este señor. Bueno, va a votar el aire, pero tengo que contestar para el señor okay, director. De, uh, no se me mueva. Madam Clerk, uh, item K, we're going to ask everyone in favor say aye. 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 Item K, pass unanimously. Una pregunta para Alan. Hoy estoy suave. Estoy suave porque quiero cuatro más cuatro. Papá. Sí, señor. <laughs> Usted nada más que cobra un salario. Of course. Yo lo felicito. ¿Usted sabe por qué? Porque yo estuve 15 años ahí y triunfé y ganaba 32 mil dólares nada más. Y en esos tiempos, en los fondos generales, habían de 4 o 5 millones de dólares. Pero yo lo felicito a usted por eso. Gracias. Usted está ganando ese salario. Thank you, Commissioner. Es posible que hay quien no le guste, ¿sabe? Item L. A resolution of mayor and the city commission of the city of Sweetwater, Florida, authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Char Business System and providing an effective day. Mayor? Uh, we approached uh, Sharp Business Systems to have them quote out the copier systems in the city. I believe there's a delegate from Sharp Systems here, and he can explain it. Um, we have a cop 
a lot of the copiers in the city that are antiquated, especially the one in Val's office, that's the one that probably has the, the most amount of use and the most amount of problems, that one and the one in the police department. So we had Sharp come in and address all the issues and put better machines in places that we need a far superior product. Uh, there's some equipment that we're going to eliminate because we're not using it, and on other machines that there was overkill to try to you know, tone it down a little bit. Uh, they gave us a better price on the equipment. Uh, they're going to buy out the existing leases with Barlup and the other company. I can't remember what it is. Uh, as well as they, they're giving us a more economical click charge, a uh, per copy charge. Uh, and if we look at this, it's to the tone of... For the, for the same amount of copies? I mean, they can charge less, but if they make more... Uh, they were they were done by these the amount of copies that were that were being currently done and the proposal could you elaborate, can you elaborate a little bit more on it yeah absolutely please if you can come to the podium and um, their proposal it it, uh, it estimates how much it's going to be a monthly savings versus a yearly savings it's it's quite a bit of savings versus and at the same time we're getting better equipment yes, please. Do, do you like me to walk back? no no if I can, to the chair. Go ahead, Commissioner. Real quick, where it says here, check for buyout, that's coming from who? They buy out the equipment. So they pay for that? They pay for it. Okay. And then my next question is, the only problem I have is, I think this is this is what's happened to us, like, every time after about three years. <laughs> yes. So couldn't we just do the contract for three years? Because then new equipment, new technology, it's worn out. How long is the term for? This is a five-year five year. term, similar to what you Same are today. Thing. Right. Good evening, by the way. I'm uh, how are you? With Sharp Business Systems. It's been uh, entertaining for the last few hours, so thank you for that. And I, you know what? There's one thing that became really obvious to me while I was listening to you all is cost savings, cost reduction. To give you an idea, we work with the city of Miami, the city of Miami Beach, the city of North Lauderdale. Those are all companies, are all municipalities that we've been working with for multiple years and multiple contracts. So what we did is we looked at your current situation. And the only way we can help satisfy your current situation is we'll provide you a check for the remaining stream of payments. So your obligation to the two companies that you owe money to right now, which are Dex Imaging and Barla, will be satisfied. You'll enter into a new agreement with us saving you based on your current spend with usage to your point almost five hundred dollars per month with the average that you're doing today but our thoughts are becoming a partner with the city and how can we really help you as a day forward strategy do things more effectively i've heard just some of the comments up here about an email that came over and you weren't able to print it or or able to review it before then with our devices right from your iphones you can send something to print on any device within the building so we can help you with some of that technology. We can also help you with moving from paper-based products or paper-based uh, workflow to digital workflows. So we're not only a company that wants to come in here and renew your equipment every three years, every five years. We want to give you a better process to work with. And that's where our strength is and that's where our references from other municipalities have always been very strong. So at this point, you're gonna buy out the two contracts and you're going to replace all the machines? We're going to replace it based on the requirement right now with the city. There's some areas where you have excess equipment. There's some areas where the current equipment is too small and it doesn't handle the workload. We're going to right size and we're going to effectively reflush that fleet. I think it breaks out to you're getting a few smaller devices in certain areas, a few better devices in others, and then we're getting rid of some altogether that you're not using. But that's my point, uh, Mayor. Uh, we are replacing all the machines? Correct. Let's yes. say like the one in the conference room on the, on the, on the second floor of my conference mm -hmm. room, that one's not being replaced. In the last year, that machine's done under 100 copies. So that one's being eliminated. Why pay for a lease on a machine that's not being used? Okay. The actual details of what equipment, how it all sets up, are in those packets that I just shared with you so you can see some of those details. And how it works is uh, we don't pay the actual lease directly to the other banks. It's illegal for us to do that as your attorney sitting here. What we do is we write the city the check for that amount of money, and the city will pay their debt to those directly. But we've looked at your stream of payments and how much money is owed, and we've given you more than enough than what you owe today to cover that in the $32,000. Go ahead, Commissioner. Mayor, uh, what about in the passport office? We got anything new there? 
I I was not the one that walked all the machines right. with. Uh, you know, we haven't with, seen the passport office. Uh, yes, yes, yes. All the buildings and all the areas were toured, and everything was accounted for. So yeah, there is yeah. Rob, there. Robert walked exactly. walked all the machines and told them where we needed better, where we needed worse, where we had overkill or not. Are you planning Commission to Commissioner Yanni? Uh, uh, do we have a couple of machines that were off? The prints, the passport pictures? That yeah, was we something. have a small copy. Uh, that's 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 little, yes, we do a $50 one. That's a little different. We do have a copy machine in our office. I have there's, never seen a copy it, there's, machine. There. There's some places, let's say like my it's office, like that I've got, a, I've got the same thing. I've got a $99 machine in my office because it's not worth engaging a lease. You know, I imagine that your most economical machine is probably $1,000 or something like that. You know, there's some places it's not worth it where you end up, like what I have in my office, a $99 machine. Yeah, maybe to clarify better, we are going to replace all the products that are currently on lease with someone else. Let's say, let's say that right. to be a little more specific. So... Because there may be some ancillary devices that we don't even know about that maybe somebody doesn't even know exists. Well, we hope that someday we can have our secretary again and we can have a good <laughs> a good copy machine to duplicate and, and do you know yeah. certain tasks that we have to to make copies. Really share, please go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, are you Mr. Oscar Cue? Seizing it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cue, uh, you are proposing the premier problem. Yes. By the name, it sounds like top of the line, Premier. Is that correct? Um, the the uh, highest, best program that you have? The most cost-effective program that we have is the Premier program. That's a good politically answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like because I was going to get to that, you know. I would like to have a Rolls Royce, but I cannot. And I, drive a, and I drive a Saturn. You know? And it takes me everywhere in the United States. <laughs> Under <Understood> completely. <laughs> okay. So it's the most cost effective of the program. That Absolutely. Have. That's what you're recommending. Absolutely. I mean, there's a couple things with that program is the cost for page, as you mentioned, does not escalate throughout the whole term. And every traditional contract, every year over year, that cost increases. With this premier program, with our municipalities partnership, that cost is fixed for the term of that agreement. Now, to be honest, to your point, when you talked about technology, because we need to go to a five-year term because of the lease and everything else that we have to pay off, our goal would be three years from now, three and a half years from now, that we owe no money to anywhere else, is to update and right-size again with the hopeful expectation that we can stop the amount of equipment and maybe have less equipment because things are moving more digital, things are moving to less paper. That would be the goal for that. We've been, we've been successful in some of the larger cities reducing multiple printers and multiple devices to smaller devices. So that's the intent. Good chair. Go ahead, Commissioner. Do, so we, do we have an option in the contract to do that? You have that option in your actual lease agreement. It allows you for what they call upgrade, downgrade <coughs> provisions throughout the agreement. And it is a fair market value lease, so you're not, mm -hmm. it's not an operating expense. It's not something that you have to expense for the whole time. That residual is held by the bank or are held by our company. Okay, so we have item L. Any other questions, comments? Move. Second. There is a motion by Commissioner Beguignan, second by Commissioner Yanio. All in favor say aye. 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 Item L pass unanimously. We hope that those machines really yeah. make everybody's life easier, aye. even the life of our future secretary. We move to item M. Thank you all. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll be in touch over the next couple of days to coordinate our machines. Thank you. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Suwater, Florida, authorizing the levy and collection of residential parking permit fees and providing an effective day. Mayor Lopez. Okay. As um, we discussed a couple of months ago, we're having a huge problem with the parking issue around uh, all the residential towers. And as we had said before, we were going to create a system. We had to come back to the commission to authorize the expenditure. Uh, we've already ordered the decals. The decals should be here sometime next week, if, um, if I'm 100% correct. I know we just got a confirmation that they have shipped out today, so I believe we're going to get them sometime next week. Uh, together with Alan, we figured out how much is going to cost to install the street posts, the street signs marking that it's residential parking permit only. 
and to try to break it down the residential parking permit application would be approximately twenty dollars per application uh, and that's the resolution that you're having today so it's authorizing the city to, to charge twenty dollars for the parking application that's a yearly fee correct <coughs> Move. item m is being moved by commissioner maroño do i have a second 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 by commissioner suarez uh Roll call, Madam Clerk. I see, I noticed some silent in the air. <laughs> Commissioner Moronio? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Commissioner Duanzo? No. Commissioner Bergignan? Yes. yes. Commissioner Barreto? Yes. Commissioner Yanya? Yes. President Diaz? Yes. Item M pass six to one. Mr. President? Yes. Uh, just to just to let everybody know, remind everybody that that, that the ordinance uh, that was adopted, along with the procedures, uh, I believe the mayor has been working on this in setting up the different residential parking areas. Uh, that ordinance requires a public hearing uh, before this commission, so that you can go ahead and and and, and approve, modify, or, or or deny the setup of, of of a specific parking area. So even though you've already taking care of the regulatory scheme, you've taken care of now that the annual fee per decal, you, you, you still have pending the public hearing that, that deals with the setting up of the residential parking area. So that, that will be the last step before. So we're going to have to scale a public meeting for, for that? Uh, it, it's when the, when, when the mayor is able to go absolutely. ahead and finalize uh, the administration's work relative to that then a public hearing would, would, would be in order uh, pursuant to that ordinance. Uh, through the chair. Go ahead, Commissioner Suarez. What you said is that the administration is going to determine the boundaries of the parking per meeting area. Correct. And, and, and then and, we are going to have a and, hearing. And bring it to the commission and allow any public input. Uh, to a, support or, a or, or against or, 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 or yeah, has to modify it, right? Correct. Okay, good. Let's go for it. All right. Uh, we move to item N, a resolution of the mayor and the city commission of the city of Suarez, Florida, authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with FPL Fibernet LLC and providing an effective day. Is this, uh, what is that? Uh, the FPL, I understand. This uh, is the fiber. This is Fibernet. the same item that <laughs> came before. It. And let me try to explain this a little further. And Robert's here. He's going to be able to t explain to you all the... Well, let me let Robert start explain yeah, to you the, the technical aspect of this. I commission uh, Officer Robert Moses. I've been a reserve officer with Sweetwater for about 12 to 13 years now. I'm not keeping track. Uh, all my time is voluntary without charge. In the business that I do, I'm in the IT field, which I have a quite successful company that... Uh, that evaluates and is doing an IP disclosure. So I think that uh, that I'm qualified to uh, give some hours to the city and help them in, in consulting with them. Um, one of the things are is there's been a change of use, and I have some items. Um, how does it pass? What's the normal procedure to pass something out to the commission? I think I have one of them. So I could help explain. Yeah. I think Robert, can you can you um, say your name and address for yeah. the records? Yes, Officer Robert Moses, and that would be 500 Southwest 109 Avenue would be my <laughs> mailing address for the city. Even though I'm a reserve officer, That's I don't think I, in a public police. forum I give my yeah. home yeah. address. Yeah. So um, please don't. <laughs> and I think this came up uh, recently before, and, and I believe uh, when I heard that there Thank was you. some questions. I think maybe the mayor wasn't prepared to technically explain the operational necessity of going with this proposed plan that I brought to the mayor. I came to the mayor and I brought up that with the new use, and if we go to the current installation, and what has occurred recently that situations have changed is the police cars with the electronic aid <coughs> that we're doing from the patrol cars with the laptops, with the air cards, you, they have get an IP address. And these vehicles that are on the road cannot connect directly 
to Miami Day to submit, they must have a friendly IP address. Every laptop that has an inner connection has its own IP address that it gets from Verizon. So they only allow one connection to come in and submit an A form. So all the police cars you see on the current have to come back to Sweetwater PD with the VPN connection and then go out. So currently, the police department, if you see the bottom, we're downstairs, the PD. If you look at the bottom, this is the building, the PD. And you can see circuit three is the PD, the internet line. We have a one and a half, 1.5 megabit connection is the current connection for all the computers in the PD to share, plus the laptops in the field with the PDs are connected in and passing through that interconnection. So not only is all the all, all of the the computer terminal sharing that one connection that's on circuit three, also all the police cars on the road are sharing that connection of a 1.5 meg. That's even slower than everyone's Comcast at home that, that that's that's bogged down. And and so the changes in the past under the previous administration that these connections from the car were not enabled. We came in and we enabled a lot of use in the last few months to the cars, in the vehicles, that is. On the laptops, we're doing electronic A-forms now. We're doing crash reports electronically. We're doing offense incident reports electronically, daily activity, the computer checks, the tow forms. We're doing everything electronically <coughs> in the last few months and going paperless. And even the A form, the arrest affidavit, when somebody's arrested, is submitted electronically and we just bring a bracelet in. So a lot of things have changed the last few months. So I approached the mayor's office, and, and, and I serve as a reserve officer this long through many administrations. I serve whoever's in charge, whoever's the, the chief or the interim chief or my captain. That's who I serve, regardless of the administration. I, I keep on going the same direction give my best no matter who's in charge, and give my recommendations. Um, so the proposed on page two is that Robert, Fibernet, Robert, which, what's it? Over here, over here. Where am I? Sorry. Can I interrupt you for one second? Because I'm sure that you've confused me, and I'm did I, technically. Did I go too fast? Anyone can ask questions. I apologize. You know, I'm a, and, I, and I understand, that you, and you're confusing me. Oh, let, let me try to. You're, you're pretty smart sometimes. Uh, <laughs> let me let me try to explain it and okay. and try to make it simple. Right now, currently, the city in the here in this building, we have five internet connections right in here right now. Uh, we have two on the second floor. One is a T1 line, and the second one is the Earthlink Voice Over IP, because all our phone systems are no longer hardwired. They're Voice Over IP, which uh, all the communication is over an internet line. So we pay two lines upstairs. In the police department, we pay, again, a voice over IP line plus two internet lines to have redu re redundancy. When you add, let's say, as far as internet's concerned, down upstairs we have a T1, so it's 10 megabits per second, as what Robert was saying a little while ago. Uh, and let's not count the voice over IP no, right now because... Okay, 1.5, I'm sorry. 1.5, not even 10. Yeah. Uh, and the voice over IP, let's not count it right now because it's not really speed. It's just for phone data communications. Downstairs, we have two internet lines and one for voice data communications, so we can't count that third one. Uh, what where We're receiving a quote from Florida Power & Light. The F, Florida FPL Fiber, they own the fiber that they resell it to other companies that then resell to the end user like us. So we're going directly to the person that's putting the fiber in the street, where collectively, let's say between downstairs and upstairs, we probably have a total of about 18 or 20 megabits per second no, no, be transmittal. Between, no, if you, add, if you add the four, the two circuits downstairs, one for voice, one for data, there are only 1.5 each. Upstairs is one po two, two circuits, 1.5 So each. we're about six, or 4.5 or six. Right, three is six, it's a total okay. of six. So we're getting so six megabits of transmission data right now on the internet. For about 3,000 a month. For about $3,000 a month. We're gonna get 200 megs of FPL fiber for about $800 a month. It's an expense that's already budgeted. A FPL has already agreed to partition it, so it'll it'll be one 100 megabit circuit coming into PD downstairs, so they can be on their own separate uh, <coughs> circuit, and one 100 megabit circuit upstairs for the admin. That then 
this 100 megabit circuit that we're going to have upstairs, which is about 35 times faster than what we have right now in it's City Hall, times more for we were able to communicate to Passport as well. And once we communicate it to the Passport office, we can eliminate that line as well, which is another $350. So e almost immediately over a two or three month period, we're going to turn a $3,500 a internet line to into a one $800 internet line. And I think that explained it a lot. Okay, the numbers again, the numbers again. We're going to convert about $3,500 in expenses a, a month immediately to $800. There's other things that we can expand on it afterwards, but that's the immediate the, the immediate savings. Well, sure. Go ahead, Commissioner. Well, it's not immediate because I would suggest I would think that you're going to get the whole thing running before you start. Yeah, over about a month. You have to have redundancy. Okay. You're going to you're going to run it one month and then start disconnecting all of them. And this is uh, I'm sorry, are you know, no. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so what line? Because it's in the in the resolution. It says, so what What fund are we getting it from? It's inside right now. We, we would have to partition part of it out so that PD pays for half the line and admin pays for half the line. Where right now we're paying for two internet lines upstairs in the administration part of it. We're paying for the voice over IP and we're paying for an internet line. But since we're going to receive one bill, we're not getting two bills. We're receiving one bill. It's $800 a month. So PD will be paying half that and the, the city will be paying half that. But from what fund? From the DSL, from the internet fund. And all from administration for right now. For, cause that's who's going to get the bill. Right, but you pay part of it from the PD budget and part of it from the administration budget. That's not one of the line items, is it? What's the actual line? Item? I don't have the budget in front of me. I couldn't tell you where I mean, we're paying the DSL from. That, that's the only part that's missing from the resolution, the actual right. breakdown and, and the funding source so we can go ahead and... Yeah, the funding source is going to be split in two, apart from where PD is paying for their internet line right now and the... 50-50? Correct. That's not really 50-50 because PD is going to end up getting more of the no, 200, but it's, it's really... split it 100. Right, it's 100 to 100. 100 downstairs and we're going to split it. When it comes in the 200 meg line, it's going to come into a router and we're going to send half of it upstairs to PD and, and half, half to of it downstairs. But I mean, going from for for the PD going from three megabytes to a hundred of bandwidth, and it is an operational necessity. That's one thing. I mean, it, it, it's almost right. a must. No, it's just a technicality. Sure. We have here oh, a sure, line that sorry. we got to fill in. It says sure, where, of course, of course. That's where it comes from. No, we're just trying to identify the, yeah, the actual a technicality. Right, right. It's 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 going to be split that. because the city yeah. should not bear the expense, the whole expense. It's, it should be split where it's fifty percent of the funds coming from the police department internet line and fifty percent is coming from the admin line. Okay, and. If I can, for the chair. Go ahead, go ahead. Go the other ahead. thing is that in the actual agreement, there's no mention of money except that we have to give a cash deposit. No, there's no cash or deposit. Or a letter of credit. There's no cash deposit. A payment of well, 725 There's no deposits required on this. A, we can engage into the contract. I believe a three-year term, I believe, is like $825. A four-year term is $795. Well, I, I have the number here. Yeah, yeah, but they didn't I put don't. it in the contract is what I'm saying. Because well, they, they, they have a one, an two, three, and a four-year contract. Quote. I actually have it on my phone. I mean, I could email it to the commission if you want right this second and flip it to them. But it's $795 for 36 months. Well, wouldn't we have to put that in the contract? So when he signs it, I'm saying, not for... Absolutely. You, you, you're proven right now, uh, based on the information that I received earlier, what, what you have here is is a monthly payment of 725 On a four-year term. On a four-year term, correct. Uh, also, um, Ricardo is looking for the actual funding sources so that this can be approved tonight. Uh, so We can amend it tomorrow and just add it to them tomorrow. It's 50% from the PD from the line item where we pay and internet. What about this and 50%? It says a cash deposit? There's no cash deposit on this. Yes, but I mean it says it. Yeah, but they're it. they're not they're not oh, requiring I think for anything. Oh, the three hundred dollars uh, setup fee was that what he's referring to? No, uh, here where it says payment on page two of the contract, <coughs> you go about three quarters of the way down, and it says uh, as condition to FN's excessive any SO, or as a condition of SN's continuation of service, FN acceptance wait, at, may at any time also require a customer to provide a cash deposit. Or another form of payment insurance acceptable example of letter of credit. That contract's normally meant for businesses that are going to use the FPL fiber so that they can cover the expense right. of taking it from yeah. the street. It's not They're on the proposal where they sent us the rate, 
uh, it says that there's no upfront cost. The only thing that we have to put up, because the FPL is already there. All that we need to do is put the connection device that I don't know what it's called. That's basically inside that electronic box down there. So there's going to be an electronic device that's going to come in there where FPL will connect to, and then we bring it inside the building. Now, when we are talking about FPL, that's not Florida Power and Light, yes. right? Yes, correct. That's so Florida Power Light. They own fiber net. They own fiber oh, really? net. Really? Yeah, Florida, and they have the line coming through. And let me say, the pricing that they gave the city of Miami is half of everyone in the whole county. City of Sweetwater. Oh, sorry, sorry, City of Sweetwater is half. I got a quote for my company for the same line was fifteen ninety five for a commercial business, and the same line to Sweetwater seven ninety five. And they did that right. is because you so met with the president of, of FIU, Madden, and, and they have a line coming through and using our facility. So, and they're going to from um, FIU across. So they felt compelled to give some special rate to Sweetwater. All right. That no one else could touch. Commissioner Suarez asked that for Moses. I have it right here. On, on a four-year note. I have I have right here the 36 month is 7.95. If we go with the 60 month, it's 7.25. It's somebody has to make a decision. What's three months is three years. 36 months is three that years. One of the one of the questions that I had asked the the rep from Florida Power and Light is that if we would engage into a contract now, would we ever save money on rates later? They said no. We're never going to yeah. get rates like we're getting right now. Excuse me, Moss. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Suarez has yeah, a floor. That please. was going to be my my question. I, I saw two dollar figure being bounced back and forth, seven hundred and twenty five. And seven hundred and eighty-five. I have the quote in front of me. It's but six. I, six sorry, go ahead, sir. Yeah, but I just heard you say that seven hundred and ninety-five is for a five-year contract. Three year, three year. Three. Thirty-six months is which is seven ninety-five. If we go to the sixty month, which is five years, it's seven twenty-five. Okay, and that's what I would recommend the city to get into. Five years. Yeah, we're never going to get this price again. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, commissioners, uh, we have a motion. Yes. This yes. Uh, apparently saved money to the city. Mm -hmm. So we are going for the five year or for the three years? That's what I would That's what. 95 or 725? If I, we do it for three years, uh, how much the renewal will? There's no renewal. We're just going to renew at the same rate. If, if they renew it at that rate. Right. With the, if the president changes hands or a new administrator in, in Fibernet, the city may lose that special half rate. It's in the city's best interest to not renew for three, not not do the contract for three, but rally for the uh, 725 rate. Because of the rate, uh, it's half of what everyone else gets in the county. So. I second it with an amendment to, to or to pick the option of uh, five years. Five years. That is a motion by Commissioner Maroño and second by Commissioner uh, Bergignan. President. Amended uh, to a five years contract at seven twenty five per month. And and that the funding providing that the funding so I'm providing for the fifty percent is to come from pol the police department PD. communications line item and the other fifty percent will come from the administrative administrative communications line item. You got that, uh Madam <laughs> Clerk? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, uh all in favor say aye. 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 Item N pass unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Hopefully this will Thank you, move Robert. forward the efficiency of the police department. This is only the beginning. Item, uh, we go to reports, police and court enforcement report. It's been That's provided right. here. Uh, parks and recreation. Maintenance department. Well, we're on parts of recreation. If uh, if I, I, I have to to Alan. If I may, um, there's an event at uh, Ronzelli Park on May 14th, which is called Zot Arts, which is promoting the arts among special kids, and we're asking <coughs> all the residents in the city, as well as the elected officials, that they may attend. This program is between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. There's uh, flyers that have been posted downstairs in combination with Miami-Dade County, and the Children's Trust, and uh, and FIU, Philip and Frost uh, Art Museum. What's the, the date? It's on Saturday, May 14th, Saturday. 10, oh, 10 to 2 at Ronzelli. Yeah, there's flyers that were 
that uh, <coughs> that were placed downstairs today, and I asked indeed tomorrow to email it to everybody. Any news, Alan? No, I have quite a Yeah. I tried to push it today. Mm -hmm. Have free life in office working the quadra. Bajante u oficina, they Bien. I say no, talk to you, why? Push in a second. And you are the partner or push you on other one, regular men? He's, yes, he's my assistant for the storm. Why say to me, take to you? No, I take to you, push it. And what was the problem? I, I didn't understand. No, tell it by next time, when I take to push it, push you say to you, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he, he told me. There was lights out in the commission office, and, and you no, no, you take care no, of it. Say to me, say to you, why say to you, push it second? Or no, they will go. It's time. He was just informing me, that's all. The, the Sometimes to try or another way. You know. This is my position before. This is my baby, maintenance. I understand. Okay. So remember three lines? Yes. Of. Okay, so so our for for uh, Parks and Recreation Maintenance Department report. Uh, yeah, we have the. Attached, yes. It's attached. Yeah. Okay, we move to item D, City Attorney's report. The only the only thing that I that I have for for this commission is, um, I would like to get some direction from from this commission, and I, and I would suggest that um, we would like to have an executive session with this commission and the mayor and the clerk, as provided by by our code, uh, if possible, Wednesday. Uh, the time, I'm, I'm open to when this commission chooses. I, we, we have to announce a time tonight uh, so that we can go ahead and, go ahead and deal with um, uh, the, the pending litigation from uh, you know, the, the, Diaz, the Saul Diaz versus City Sweetwater uh, litigation. I like to, there are a couple of uh, developments that I like to make this uh, commission aware of and and to obtain subsequent direction. So I would like to see if we can have a, an executive session this Wednesday, um, seven or eight p.m. as as whatever is more convenient for for this commission. Eight p.m. Eight p.m. <coughs> Wednesday at eight. Yes. Perfect. You said this Wednesday. Yes. The next Wednesday. Okay. This one. This, this Wednesday. Two days from now. Okay, let's go for Wednesday at 8 o'clock p.m. This Wednesday. 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 Two, days from, two days from now. Two days from now. Okay, we'll have two days from now. Okay. Um, so it would be uh, Wednesday, May 4th. 4th. Okay. How do you feel? Don, Mr. <coughs> Attorney? Mayor's okay. report? The only thing I really had to report at this time was the um, the SOT arts, arts program that um, that's on May 14th, but I put it under park, so that's the only thing at this moment. Okay. Uh, item F, Commissioner's report. Yes, Mr. President. Go ahead, Commissioner Goretto. I would like to wish a happy and wonderful Mother's Day to all the residents of Fieldwater. Quiero desearle a todas las mamás un día feliz en unión de sus familiares. Okay, so voicing the entire commission, Commissioner Janio, Berguignan, Commissioner Duazo, Commissioner Suarez, Commissioner Maroño, we want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Le deseamos un feliz día de las madres y le pedimos que no hagan nada para que no sea de madre el día de las madres. Así que muchas cosas lindas, reúnense con la familia, que la lleven a pasear, a comer y que tengan un buen tiempo de calidad con sus hijos y nietos y bisnietos porque muchos los tienen que no consiguen al restaurante go ahead commissioner yes uh, uh, some time ago not too long ago we finally have one mailbox back in the city of Sweetwater to go back a little bit very shortly the city of Sweetwater <coughs> before during the good old times it had about four or five mailboxes I understand that the uh, system has changed quite a bit. A lot of the uh, young generation is using the internet to pay. They don't use the snail mail. But this city has a lot of senior citizens who are still used 
to the snail mail to the regular post office and that's why I am fighting for two mailboxes out of four or five that we had five, seven years ago. We have one. I requested when we got the first one by the senior center that the city publicize that one <coughs> in the channel 77 and the website and I've been looking at those and I haven't seen any promotion. I asked the mayor please if he can keep the ball rolling on this item, promoting so our senior citizen knows. If you had asked me, Commissioner Suarez, to put it there, I dropped the ball because I don't remember, recall that, but I'll definitely address that now. But I don't really recall you telling me to, to put it on the Channel 77. For the benefit, maybe it was one of the uh, uh, occasions <coughs> that you were not in the meeting, maybe. But I did say it. Um, it's not a problem. I'll get it done. Okay. Uh, so I want to wish all mothers a happy Mother's Day, Sunday, and thank you. Uh, yes, I just want to mention it that we should look into it. I don't know if we have the funds. I might be able to ask the uh, finance director later on when it's his turn. But I have been noticed that the, uh, the building and zoning department, we should look forward to do something to have those plans on CDs. Is, if it's a fire, we're going to lose everything. Uh, have everybody have gone and see the situation with the planning chart? You see in the back, it's all over the floors everywhere. I mean, we are should move forward if we ever have the phone, or we should have the phones available to have an equipment to be put on CDs, or a company could do it. We don't have to just look for quotes or do something about it because uh, it's a hassle. Maybe we can do it to the company now that's doing the digital stuff for us. They they have solutions for that, but to answer that, last year there was thirty-five thousand dollars that was put into the building department monies to be able for them to buy equipment so that they can start scanning all the software. They haven't looked into anything. They're the ones that need. They're the ones that know their needs. We don't know their needs, but there hasn't been any movement on their <coughs> part to do that. But there was actually thirty-five thousand dollars budgeted to do that. I thought that that was for plotters, though. No, it was so that they can building department and say other other municipalities they once you drop off plans they charge you to digitize them so that all those plans are being digitized and they charge you to do it so it's relatively it's a program that's going to pay for itself then as you're digitizing from this point forward <coughs> little by little you start scanning back okay but it was budgeted but they haven't looked into the equipment because the equipment is Vault software as well and right. they know their needs we don't know their needs uh Okay, so, it's okay. no, no. so it's fair to say that uh, the finance, I mean, the uh, building and zoning uh, director should look forward into this, right? Correct. It's his and job to do it. And then he have to come to us for approval? Correct. He's got, okay. right now there's $35,000 on it's the 35, budget. How much? 35. 35,000. Okay, thank you. I don't know if the equipment is cost 20. I don't know if it costs 50. No, we, but we budgeted 35, you know. We budgeted 35. Okay, thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Val, thank you, congratulations. All the commissioners today have new chair, right? Thank you, yeah, Val. Val to the Alan, Val to the mayor, I don't know. I don't know, Rob Ventura, but I have new chair. Okay. Oh, they're coming. Sometimes, maybe my people say, why? Do I so? United States English only. Ay, please. Yo quisiera que ustedes vieran como en el pueblo quieren que le hablen muchas cosas en español. I run to the city every day. I sit down the city far of I are. For all the solutions, the people are coming to me. Precepto aso en Spanish. No comprendo muchas cosas. Y por eso ustedes me ven muchas veces hablando en español. Yo comprendo. You write right, English only. Y aquí tiene que ser en inglés. Pero mi pueblo me entiende y cuando salgo a la calle, oiga, terrible, terrible, y no quieren que me retire, quieren que 4 más 4 o 4 más 3. 4 más 3. Thank you. Okay, uh, we move to item G, elderly service program report is attached, a special project report is attached, building and zoning report is attached, finance report. 
It's attached. City clerk's report. Uh, that's attached, but I have something else to discuss with you. Uh, I received a veto from the mayor of one of the resolutions that was passed at last meeting. Uh, when would you like to hear the veto? Usually you don't wait until the next regular meeting to hear what it. Is it. No, that's a different. No, that's, well, we that's need four days, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Before what? Four day rule. Four day, four day rule. At this point, you couldn't add that to, to this particular agenda, so it will have to be for a subsequent meeting. Do you want it next Monday night, or, or do you wish to wait until the next regular meeting? It's no, 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 Monday night or Friday. Is it, it's okay with you Friday, Friday night? Can we do it on Wednesday after? Fr Friday is not okay. No, it couldn't be Wednesday. This Friday is not okay. Eight o'clock. No, this Friday. Yeah. Okay, then we do it uh, Monday night. Monday night. Really. Monday, 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 did you want the items in the consent agenda put on that? Yes. Issue? Yes, well, please. Yes, please. Very good. So we got rid of some uh, load. There are two items that, right? Yes. Yes. The February 1st and the... Uh, no, there are three items. No, they're, they're, uh, I'll send you all the minutes again. Okay. And the uh, and department? Uh, pardon? The uh, department, too? Department head. Department head, yeah. Okay. Please. Make so it like pie in physics. Yes. Hmm? Do I have to put it on Wednesday's meeting as well? No, it's an executive session. That's not that's a, a that's not commission. No, no, I mean next Monday. Yeah, yeah. Monday. 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 The mayor's veto, the consent agenda, and ratification of department heads. Okay. All right. Uh, we move to item L, human resources report. It's attached. Number 13, unfinished business. 14, new businesses. 15, good of the order. 16, do I have a move to adjourn? Move! Second. Move by Commissioner Barreto Anduazo, second by Commissioner Yanio. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned at 10.31 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.